Hello and welcome to the RPG Academy podcast Twitch channel. My name is Michael and we are here tonight for another episode of our The Sample Adventures. This is a newer series that we've been doing recently where we kind of explore, kick the tires, if you will, on various city settings or systems uh, through the sample adventure that is included either in like the core rule book or an adventure guide, a setting guide, or in like tonight's case, a quick start. So we are going to be playing Blue Rose, which is a romantic fantasy game. I, the most close association I have to it is like the Mercedes Lackey books, the Heralds of Valdemar series, which I absolutely love. And um, Kevin's going to be our game master. We're going to get to him in a minute. This is the second edition of the rules that were released by Green Ronin, and it uses the Fantasy Age game engine. I think it's called the is it Adventure Game Engine? Yeah, the AGE? Adventure Game Engine yeah. or Age System. Yeah. yeah. So definitely. that is what we are going to be playing tonight. So again, my name is Michael, and I will be playing a character named Malachi, who is an adept. He goes by Mal to his friends, and I'm going to assume these other two yahoos are, are friends of mine. Uh, Kaylee, <laughs> would you like to introduce yourself and your character, please? Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Kaylee. I go with she, her pronouns. And I am currently playing Chaya. Chaya is a rye badger. She is a grumpy old rye badger who has seen many dark things about the two legs, but holds out hope that someday they'll grow up and join, do good things in the world. But uh, for those who aren't uh, familiar with the system, rye animals are part of this world. They are they're the, uh, for better or worse, the awakened beasts of the world. So they are fully human, equal, intelligent, or not thereof, depending. And almost all of them have some sort of psychic ability, and that is how they communicate with other people. So, Excellent. absolutely. Yep. And then joining us tonight, first time I had the chance to play with uh, them on the stream is Christine. I'm Christine, and tonight I'm playing Ortelia Dolbrook, and she is a human warrior from the matriarchy of Lartian. So it's from a country far to the west, actually, of Aldis, which is the main setting for the game world. Fantastic. Yeah. And then leading us tonight as our narrator or game master is Kevin. Kevin, say hello to everyone and kind of just kick off the game however you normally would. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, hello, everyone. Yes, as Michael said, I am Kevin. I've been here on the RPG Academy before, uh, playing mostly and done some of the uh, detention episodes. So I'm happy to be here and be running something. And we're going to show off Blue Rose, which, as Michael said, is a game that utilizes the adventure game engine from Green Ronin Publishing. It's a really cool game. Age is actually my favorite system to play. So although this is my first time playing and running Blue Rose, I'm very familiar with the system. So I'm excited to see the romantic aspect of it. And since this is a romantic fantasy, uh, basically what we're looking for is the characters and heroes within our story tonight are going to be virtuous, good people who are very in tune with nature and the world around them. They are trying to do the good thing. They are chivalrous and noble. Uh, we're not seeing anti-heroes or people with chips on their shoulders here. This is a group that are good, wholesome people, and they are trying to help those in need. And that's really one of the cornerstones of romantic fantasy. So our Avengers tonight is going to take place in the world of Aldea, which uh, it specifically has one of the capital cities is Aldis. Now, this is a realm of strong passions that are married to equally strong ethics. So we will be exemplifying that through our characters. Uh, specifically, our adventure is going to start with our three heroes wandering down through the wooded pass of a section of the world that is actually outside of the more civilized sections of Aldis. They are going to be passing their way through the green wood. And when we come in to see our characters there is a bright beautiful day there is bird song that greets us as sun streams down through the leaves of the canopy above the forest here is tranquil and calm and our three characters have been adventuring together for some time they are close friends and companions uh a family as it were of adventurers who have braved other quests before we are Playing with the age system, so we will be using the same specific uh, rules that all of the age products use, which is basically to do any sort of task resolution, our characters are going to roll 3d6, one of which is going to be a different color than the other two. They're going to roll these three, add them together, and the die that is the other color is designated as their stunt die. Uh, if there's 
doubles rolled on any of the three dice, including the stunt die, they are going to generate stunt points where they could do really cool, over the top, cinematic type stuff, which we'll see as play continues. So, as the three of you walk through the wood, um, it's a brisk day in Pavin Wood here as you travel along, and the wind is blowing down a very nice, warm, gentle breeze that brings you all a bit of a sense of calm tranquility, as I mentioned. In the wood here, uh, you three have been through the wood before, and you're very familiar with its uh, trappings and its uh, different paths. So this isn't a place that is bringing any sort of danger to you at all. But as you walk along, we get a glimpse of the camaraderie that the three of you have. So let's take a moment, if we could, as our attention is drawn to the three of you. The first that we see is actually going to be Christine's character. Christine, if you could, tell us what do we see when we see Ortelia as our vision focuses on the three. Well, Ortelia is a middle-aged woman. Um, she's has long brown hair, very tan, deep tan skin, and dark eyes, which is very common of her cast in uh, Lartian. She is also very definitely a warrior. She has a strong build. She has a longbow across her back, and she has hatch a set of hatchets and a longsword on her belt. She's mm. very confident, and but is very relaxed in the company of her companions. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the next of your companions is a very different sight to you, indeed, being one of the Raiden, which are, in fact, as Kaylee already mentioned, sapient animals that have been semi-awakened. They have psychic connection to the world around them, and they actually are, although a little bit bigger than normal animals, they still are animals indeed so these aren't anthropomorphic you know winnie the pooh type people these are actual animals of a larger variety which shows the true connection to the land of the romantic fantasy so when we see chaya uh what exactly are they doing in this moment and uh what do we notice about them chaya is uh a large very heavy set badger uh the classic badger look not like sonic the the hedgehog type badger but uh more like a wisconsin badger the the gray body that is about four feet long uh but it's her entire body is thick with muscle under the fur uh, she has the black stripe markings down the top but they're fading a little bit more and there's a little gray around the muzzle and as she kind of trudges along beside the two, uh, there's an almost unceasing litany in both of their minds of grumbling and growling about pe <sighs> long legs. Just, you have to, why are you walking so fast? You don't need to walk that fast. Some of us have shorter legs than you do, and you don't need to be so why are we in a hurry this is not it, just this constant <laughs> they've been ignoring it for hours now but mm -hmm. it's this litany of almost not even really vocalized because chaya cannot vocalize except for normal badger noises but it's just ongoing complaint stream that they're very well used to at this point absolutely absolutely Bringing up the rear of this trio of friends is, in fact, our third and final adventurer this evening. Michael, if you could tell us a little bit about Malachi and how he carries himself and how he approaches the scenario today. So I just want to start by saying that even though I've, I love the Mercedes Lackey's books, I have not read the Blue Rose uh, book. So anything I get wrong about my character is just my ignorance. Uh, but Malachi is probably late 20s, early 30s. Uh, fairly well fit, so he is a mage, so he's not necessarily muscular, but he's also, you know, keeps in shape. Um, his skin has a bit of a darker hue to it, and his hair is very dark to the point it's almost like a blue, like his hair is so black it's blue. And all my clothing matches that and my eyes spectacularly. Like, I look amazing. Um, I carry, well, I actually use like a walking staff, and every now and then you might notice like a certain step that maybe you get the idea that maybe I need that for support, uh, maybe an old injury of some sort. It's not very apparent, but if you watch watching long enough, you'll see that. A huge smile on my face. I love being in the woods. I love being with my friends. And I'm just using like bird call whistles. I'm just, you know, and I'm just matching the bird song. Every now and then a bird will actually come out and like land on my finger. And, and even though we're not actually talking, though I do have that ability to do that, we're just sort of whistling to each other. It's not like I'm a Disney princess or a situation. 
Very good. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, the, as I mentioned, the bird song around you all envelops you. It uh, draws you in. And there's not a problem in the world that you all have as you take in the beauty and the majestic splendor of Pavin Wood. Up ahead, however, uh, as you continue your journey, which so far has been rather uneventful, uh, you ran into a couple of fellow travelers a couple of hours ago as you've been walking through. But now that you are deeper within the wood, it is going to be more naturalistic here. You don't have a lot of foot traffic, as it were. So you all notice in unison that a ways up ahead, there is a large animal that begins to step up out of some nearby brush just off the side of the road. As you see the creature come into the light, uh, streaming from above, you see that they are a larger-than-normal uh, wolf. They have grayish-white fur that is majestic all over their form. They have a deep, piercing, yellowish-green tint to their eye. As they look around, they see the three of you specifically, and they wait for a moment. And as you draw nearer, they stop, and they actually sit down on the road, uh, regarding your gradual approach, almost as if they're waiting for you to come closer. Clearly, this is this is no ordinary animal. Uh, you can tell instinctively, Chaya, that this is a rye wolf. You can just tell by the size, the way it carries itself, that it has a little bit more of an intelligence than a normal wolf. What uh, would you three like to do with this? The grumpy uh, rambling cuts off. It's like... Uh, uh. Yeah. Nobody I know. Uh, it's just just because I'm old doesn't mean I know everybody in the world. But oh, well, but you're the one that can check in with them. So I mean, you can check in with them too if you were a little more open-minded. And Chaya will actually uh, reach out with psychic contact and do the equivalent of the polite knock. That is, hey, can I talk to you, brain to brain? Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's go ahead. Let's uh, make our first roll of the evening. If we could, Chaya, let's have you go ahead and roll a... Uh, let me get my list of skills in front of me. I thought it was on the back of this DM screen, but I don't see it. Um, nope, I'm off to a great start, y'all. Uh, go ahead and give me a... Um, communication psychic? Yeah, communication... Th you know what? That's even better. Communication psychic for me, please. So hmm. you're going to roll those 3d6. And you're going to add those up. You're going to add your score in communication. If you have the focus of psychic, you add a plus two to your roll. I do not. Yep. Now, one thing I do not remember, because it has been almost two years since I played this. Do I add mm -hmm. all three dice together or just the two dice, not counting the stunt die? All you're going to add all three together. Okay. Yep. And then whatever the off color one is will be the stunt die. That uh, part I remember. If it's... Uh, going to be doubles and matches the target number so totally it total is a 15 which is really okay. good and i did get double four with four on the stunt die okay perfect perfect so that would generate four stunt points stunt points are used in different scenarios whether they be social encounters exploration encounters investigation encounters and of course combat or spell magic type of abilities to do additional effects um i think because right now you all just kind of are approaching this wolf they don't seem to have any sort of hostile intent um you're gonna very easily see that they as you call out to them that you can feel that they welcome your greeting they issue a similar greeting and there is that psychic connection where almost as if without words uh images that you kind of see flash a bit the wolf greets you as well and uh beckons the three of you to come forward uh pleadingly as if uh, they are looking for help looking for aid okay I'll read this to my companions, and for my stunt points, if you don't mind, yeah. I will spend all four on exciting opportunity. Your action impresses or inspires an NPC in the encounter. Uh, while there's no immediate effect, this may lead to some important group or character offering you future patronage, membership of an exclusive organization. Uh, obviously, I, 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 my wonderful, <sighs> experienced mind is just captivating to this Rye Wolf. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, do the three of you approach or do you do anything else? What else Try heads do? forward. Yeah, I, oh, uh, yeah, I'm I, definitely approaching nodding. Yeah. So I like think Mal has <laughs> some similar abilities, but I'm going to let uh, Chaya take the, the lead and just kind of let them relay back to me. Uh, but I will send the bird off its own and I'm you know, not aggressively, but I'm looking around just to see if there's something else going on that maybe hasn't become apparent yet. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
So as the three of you approach, this wolf actually stands up now. It does a bit of a bow, I guess you could say, as it leans down, lowers its head for a moment before riding itself. And you now, in a closer proximity, Chaya, you get a psychic actual language the wolf actually communicates with you. Um, so you will have to, of course, relay this information to your allies, because unless the wolf is directly communicating to them as a rye animal, um, mm -hmm. you will have to translate it, I guess you could say. The connection doesn't quite work that way. But yeah. Well, met traveler, I am Frostwind, and these woods are my home, he says, looking around. I mean no harm to you or to your companions. I merely wish to speak with you, and if you're willing to hear me out, I'll ask you a small bit of a favor. I have no means by which to repay the three of you for the request, save my gratitude and friendship. Uh, I am impressed with your loyal countenance, and I would like to offer you a bit of a guide through this forest, if you are in need of that as well. But nonetheless, I hope you will listen, and uh, I believe that a life, or perhaps more than one life, hang in the balance of my words, if you would heal them, or he heed them. Chaya, like, approaches the wolf as they begin to speak and sits down uh kind of mirroring with with their head the the bow and listens to the wolf's uh speech and what the other two hear is okay and this is not relayed to the wolf uh, the the wolf wants us to help him with something uh somebody's in trouble or something he's got no money to pay us but it'd be a good deed and i mean that's what you what you people like to do right so we should probably help him yeah well it's a ride uh ride oh, we should be assisting and these are his woods so he hangs out here I that's it. never it's never a bad thing to make an ally amongst an area you're not familiar with oh and he said he could give us some guidance too so there's oh, there's you. there is that yeah mal has a big smile on his face this is like a quest from a storybook this is amazing <laughs> someday mal we're actually gonna find something that doesn't make you happy <laughs> challenge accepted absolutely uh, chaya turns back to the wolf thing my boon companions are interested in helping it took a little convincing but they are stout of heart for two legs oh Excellent. Excellent. Well, he sits back down on the side of the road. Uh, he motions with his head for maybe the three of you to step off the road. And you can see that out of the brush that he stepped out of, there's a couple of logs um, and different stumps here that could be easily make for chairs. Uh, if you want to sit and rest your weary feet for a while, you've been traveling for some time. So that might be to your benefit. But yeah. Mal will take a seat and stretch out his left leg a little bit, kind of like as if it's a bit stiff. Okay. Definitely Absolutely. take a seat. Still mm -hmm. keeping an eye on the surrounding area, just force of habit, but. Sure. Yeah. I think that's perfectly fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, Frostwood looks up to the three of you and he says, my friend, Greymane, uh, recently came to me with some troubling news. While wandering close to the nearby village, for indeed closer than probably was wise, she stumbled across a human youth who was gathering mushrooms she said that the boy had a furtive, wounded look, almost as if he had been wounded in his spirit rather than his physical form. She believes that she felt the stirrings of the rye bond within him. When she attempted to draw nearer, an older human with a stick came out and chased her away under threat of violence. They grabbed the boy and, yelling quite furiously, ran off into the wood back towards the nearby town. Ah, she ran. She was frightened by the sheer violence at display of this man. And since then, after she returned, she got her bearings about her. She told me that she was troubled and restless in the days after. I suspected that she wanted to go back in search of the young human, but I counseled her against this for the fear of additional violence or perhaps danger from the nearby town. You see, we wolves are the sorts of animal that a town like that would perhaps think are being hostile towards their livestock. So I told her it was the best 
case to simply venture back. But she typically heeds my advice, but I have not seen or scented her in several days since then. I believe she returned to look for the boy. I would go to look myself, as I said, but we would be drawing upon hostility from the town, them thinking that perhaps we are, again, a danger. The three of you, perhaps, could look in upon this and try to locate the boy or my friend to make sure that no harm has befell them. I fear the worst. So I ask you three kindly, would you be willing to go to the village and try to find out what has become of my friend, Greymane? All right. Let me, uh, let me, let me run this by the group here. I, I don't see any problem, but you know how two legs are sometimes. <laughs> and Chaya kind of switches channels, these two. Okay. So I forgot his name already. It's Frosty something or other. But he has this friend who's also a wolf named Greymane. Uh, and I think that there was a kind of a nascent rye bond forming with this brat from a neighboring town. Uh, and the brat's parents came along, got all angry, shook sticks at Greymane, ran her off. And while Frosty here told them not to go back, well, you know, rye bonds are hard to say no to. Uh, so they, he thinks Greymane went back. So we need to kind of go and investigate, maybe find Greymane or find this kid, maybe get them together and just like teach these people that rye wolves aren't just dumb beasts that are going to slaughter all their, uh, all their cattle. It's just, it's not how this works. It's, it's uh, people. Ugh. Are you, are you guys in? Is that, is that oh, cool? Definitely. Yes, of course. Okay. Now, well, Michael knows exactly what Rob Bonds, of course, but Malachi perhaps does not. So would someone like to educate him? Mm -hmm. I was just going to make note of that. Uh, I think, Chaya, you, of course, being one of the ride in one of these animals that are sapient like this, you know what one is. You've heard of them before. I have uh, it, You Yes, and exactly. You have one with uh, a, an ally who is not part of the adventuring group today. Um, the other two of you, you may have heard of it. You could, if you would like to, make an intelligence arcane lore or an intelligence natural lore to perhaps get an idea of what you might know about it. I probably have a decent shot. My spouse was actually a, uh, according to the history, was a uh, Alden emissary. Oh, Ooh. perfect. Well, So just to, again, remind myself of the rule. So my intelligence score is a number, but within yes. the intelligence, I have like the focus. And if I have a focus mm -hmm. that matches, that's an additional plus two. That's, that's like correct. invisibly added to that total. That's right. Yeah. So the 3d6, add them all together. Uh, you're going to add your intelligence and you're going to add the two if you have the focus in either arcane lore or natural lore. Yep. Okay. Otherwise, just take the regular intelligence number. Okay. So I have a 13 total and I have stump points if it matters. Okay. So 13, I think Christine, you said you had 12? 12. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you both have heard of rye bonds before. What happens is sometimes in nature, certain rydan actually have an inherent connection to non rydan ride in animals uh basically uh, it could be a human it could be a member of another race and what they have is they form an inherent bond with them a friendship a kindred ship that goes far beyond just a normal friendship uh so basically uh what's going on here is it seems like this wolf has an inherent connection with this human instantly feels bonded and connected and friendly towards them uh, a companion as it were and they are wanted to return to them and uh, it's something that is very, uh, this is like old magic of some sort. Like this is something that is very deep. Uh, this isn't uh, something that's fleeting. This is a very serious bond, as it were. Yeah, if anybody's read the uh, Valdemar series, it's like a companion bond. Yeah, um, kind of yeah. and uh, Chaya does have a rye bond with uh, another PC who is not here, Michael. And... Uh, I, I, in my head, that's where we're actually heading. Uh, and part of the trip has been uh, Chaya's unceasing questions to Ortelia about uh, her intentions towards Michael. Um, 
almost grilling, but never going beyond like <laughs> polite inquiry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is it Absolutely. pretty understood that maybe common folk are aren't as educated around this, and they may not understand or even know of these bonds? Yeah, depends so, yeah, so. on where they come from culturally. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Unfortunately, there are areas where people think that the Rydan animals are dangerous or suspicious or up to trickery. Um, but people who know the truth know that they are just kind and regular folks, just like everyone else. So, yeah, this sounds like a wonderful time. Alrighty. Ortelia, yeah. how about you? Oh, I was in the minute you said possible Rybond. This is right. something we have to protect. All right. Yeah, noted. Okay. And uh, I changed channels back. Yes. I've convinced them and they are happy to help. Yes. Excellent. I, I am truly grateful, friends. I can lead you towards the area where the village is. Again, I do not wish to get any closer than I need to, but I can take you through the forest so that you know and find the way directly. Uh, is there any questions that you might have for me as we walk along? I, again, I'm versed in the woods and how the things go on here, and I can perhaps give you insight. Um, I'll relay those questions without all the snippy commentary. So, again, this is for Michael. So, Grey Wind, or Grey Mane, is the wolf, and they are now missing? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. And then the young boy was probably back in the village. So, okay. Yeah. Then I, I would just ask, is, is there a quicker way... Like, do you know pass of the forest or should we just continue along the road? Like, what is the fastest way to get to the town? Yes, if you are willing to keep up, I know paths through the forest that would get us there quicker. And it would not take quite as long as going through the road, which would take at least the rest of the day. I can get us there in just a few short hours and we can get there with time to spare. We'll give you time to perhaps rest if you need it and to ask about inquiries there. Um, I will look to my companions The traveling through the woods directly would be a little bit more tough on me, but I actually have an ability called enhancement I could use to like enhance my dexterity to make it easier with my legs. So if they are willing to do it, I'm willing to do that so I can keep up. Whatever works best for you. Up to you. It's an adventure. I say we adventure. All right. Uh, I'm going right. to make more, maybe more birds will come and, you know, perch on your fingers and make you even happier. So I'm making a willpower test. I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice. Uh, no stunt points, but I rolled really well. That's a 16, which that gives really me well. a plus two to my dexterity, which make it a four. So I've basically given myself this leg wound. So I've now counteracted this role play thing I gave myself. So <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> it's always good to just pull the rug out from under yourself, Michael. Very good. No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, oh yeah. So the three of you do, you follow, uh, Frostwind into the forest proper. You can start going into the foliage and there are a, a bit of a winding path that juts back and forth between different areas of it, but it's not dangerous. It's just the way the forest is. It's natural overgrowth here. You can see the frost wind is very respectful of not making sure not to break any branches or knock anything down. Nature is, you know, reserved and uh, revered in this area. So he's making sure to do that. I'll do and my best, but I ain't promising. I'll <laughs> always follow the lead of the ride in. There we go. So you travel for some hours, uh, about an hour and a half, roughly. You guys make good time because you're all very fleet of foot. And you are, again, experienced adventurers who know how to travel in the wooded areas. Uh, as you continue along, you can see that part of the wood begins to thin out. And just past it, you can see that there is actually a bit of an outline of some houses that are here. A small little settlement type structure that begins to give way to a larger village. You can see that there is a sign just on the outskirts of this village that marks it as the village of Redbriar. You can see that there are locals that are moving and milling about in different activities that locals would in a town like this. You can see that there are people who are carrying uh, different, you know, uh, 
barley and wheat and things like this that they have harvested. You can see other people nearby are working on goods, maybe perhaps for taking to a different village for sale. You can see there's even people that are, you know, looking after their children as they run and play and frolic in the center of the town square. Um, you can see that there's smoke houses that are about to, there's a, a really tasty and delightful smell of uh, smoking meats that assails the three of you and you realize that it's been most of the day since you've eaten so perhaps that might be something to look into as well uh but you can see though that although all these people are going about their business and enjoying their lives out here there is a little bit of an unease uh, a pall of i don't want to say darkness because that's not quite what it is but just a certain level of worry that's over everyone as you begin to approach um, and as you approach in, you see that further into the center of the town, there seems to be some sort of commotion, some sort of hubbub. And as you begin to step towards it, uh, Frostwind will actually say, I will take my leave of you here. I will return to the forest. Please, if you need anything, I will be just back there with the trees part, and I will be waiting for you. I will give you any sort of other information that you might need. And I want, wish to thank you again, friends. Thank you so very much for helping my friend in this manner. We'll we'll do our best to try and find him, and I, I will I will shout if we need more information. He so, bows you know, that deep bow again. This way. <laughs> he says thank you, uh, and he'll be nearby if we need help. Excellent. Village, oh, you guys see my early, but I notice a strange sort of malaise or pall. Amongst the pop. Oh, there's a commotion. There's a commotion going on over there. I think that's probably a good place the to best start. Place to start. Okay. Um, how do you all approach it? Do you just go right in there? Do you have a sort of way you approach new towns? Well, what, I, you know, I was going to ask since this village, like we're making some assumptions now that perhaps they don't understand the rye bond. How are they going to feel about an oversized badger hanging out with us? Like, is that I, cool or should we like? I was actually going to ask. Since I've traveled a lot, since I originally come from farther out islands, can I tell from you know the dress, the style of building, where these folks are, would their ancestry would come from? Like if they're from a particular other country other than Aldis. Mm, yeah, I see. Um, I think initially you could definitely tell that they are from Aldis. Uh, but if you'd like to, you could perhaps do an intelligence cultural lore check to maybe see if uh, there's maybe sort of other information that you might glean. There's nothing on the initial glance that marks them as strangers to this land, though. Um, 12 with doubles. 12 with doubles. Okay. You can definitely tell that, yeah, they're definitely all this, but it seems to be that it's a few generations removed from maybe some other area. There's just enough of the way the houses are built that looks a little bit off. Um, it's not concerning. It just looks a little bit different, something that you guys weren't expecting. But it doesn't seem to be anything that's out of the ordinary other than just a little bit of, you know, the shingles might be cut differently or the, the windows might have a different type of trim on them that really doesn't quite fit this area. So nothing, nothing worrisome, I guess you could say. I don't see anything that would be immediately negative about Raiden, but, you know, this is all just, there are so many different people here. There could be some people that have, have something against Raiden or just don't understand them. Well, we'll have to deal with them one way or the other. This is true. Uh, whatever that is in the smokehouse, though, smells delicious. We should definitely get some of that. Yes, that's high on the list. All right, and then one more question for Kevin. Uh, so I have some abilities, psychic abilities, both with animals and people. I know I can make contact and read surface thoughts. Again, not don't know the Blue Rose very well, but from like the Valdemar series, it's generally kind of looked down upon to do that unless it's like a dangerous situation. So is it like cool for me to start reading people's minds or should I not do that? Um, I think inherently, you know, kind of getting an idea of people's surface thoughts or emotions isn't necessarily a problem. I, you could maybe say that trying to fully probe into someone's mind and maybe even trying to control their mind would be dangerous, but you don't really do it that way. You just do it to have a way to get a better grasp of dealing with people. Uh, typically, the, the ride in, in this area and people having type of that psychic connection is not frowned upon it's not like it's uh it's not going to make you a pariah of the town okay. or anything like that 
So. All right. Well, I'll still, I'll refrain for now and we'll see okay. if that changes. Okay. So let us approach. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as you begin to approach, you can see that some of the townsfolk, as I mentioned, are looking towards the center of town where there seems to be a commotion of some sort. And as the three of you draw ever closer, you can see that there is a tall, uh, kind of gaunt looking man. He's got kind of unkept hair, very long, bushy sideburns. He's thin, uh, very tall, thin, uh, and he's basically he's got a walking stick and you can tell by the way that he carries himself. He's although he's wiry, he's got an athletic type of build to him. So although he has this walking stick, he doesn't seem to need it to walk. He just has it as an affectation. Uh, he's shaking the cane towards this woman who is dark complexion. She has long uh, hair that has like a luster to it. She's got a little bit of some wraps across her forehead, just a headband type of situation. Nothing that she's not wounded or anything like that. But she has a matronly kind of approach to her. She is very, um, she looks like somebody who would be somebody in charge, I guess you could say. Um, the man shakes the stick. He says, you're going to find what happened to my boy. That creature came in the town and took him out of here. And I won't stand for it. You, I can't expect you to have me be so calm when my child was taken by one of those strange beasts from the forest. And she says to him, now, Jatos? I know I have said it a million times, but Marcus has disappeared. We do not know why, but we need to stay calm and make sure that we are in control so that we handle this properly. We need to explore all options. I feel for you, I truly do, but we will get him safe and sound to come home, but you need to... I'm not going to do anything, he says, and he starts storming around, and you can see this man is just really just out of sorts. Uh, it's, I'm pretty sure since we have an open, uh, mental link to, um, Chaya, like, I think we found them. <laughs> yeah. And we found the most exemplary example of humanity that could ever uh -huh. walk all this. I mean, just, but it sounds like the boy's missing. So mm -hmm. have they run off to try to find their wolf? Or are they if being Gray mean found the kid, then well, they probably are being, dealing with the Rybond right now. Uh, so they may be holed up somewhere nearby. Hopefully. But this is also the woods, and there can be bandits and all sorts of other things. So maybe you should do you should try that two leg thing where you talk to them and get more information. <laughs> so do I we, can do Yeah. Um so again, I have the ability to calm people and I feel like maybe uh, dad here might be a, a good target for that one. So how about I work on that while uh, Ortelia speaks to the, the matronly woman who might. I'm going to go to speak with the head woman. Yeah. And I'll go talk to dad. Okay. As the two of you approach, you see that suddenly dad turns his attention. Who are you two? What do you think you're doing approaching? What is going? Are you? Wait a minute. Your strangers here. Are you some actual adventurers who are going to come and find my boy? People here in the town are not doing anything to help me. Perhaps you could, though. Yes, yes, you look like you've been about the woods. You have a bit of a dirt and soot about you. He says, looking at you, Mal. So I will give him a big smile. I'll kind of flourish my cloak and give him a bow. Uh, Malachi Baldrick, at your service. And I, of course, will pledge my service to protecting your boy. That is my primary concern here. Well, someone's speaking some sense around here. Who might you be? He's just looking at you. Yeah, I'll sort of open, I'll let you introduce yourself, but I'll sort of, oh, like, you know. Gesture. Yeah. Vanna White. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Um, I'm Ortelia Dolbrook, and I was just going to speak to the head woman here and see what's going on, if she can inform me of what the situation has been. So I'll try to like corral dad and like sort of move them away so that we can each have private conversations. Um, and then I will open my psychic link. I guess it's always open to Chaya just so that Chaya can, basically is included in the conversation. If they have questions they want me to ask or insight, I can, you know, put it into the conversation seamlessly, of course. Chaya is going to attempt to uh, remain unnoticed uh, and possibly uh, find out what that smell is. Pay no attention ah. to the badger over there. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Alrighty, so um, let's go ahead and we'll start with you, Mal. So as you approach the gentleman, you pull him aside. Yeah, again, he is worked up. You can tell uh, there is just, you know, rage billowing out of this man. You could tell he says to you, I can't deal with this woman. She's in charge of the town, but she has no brains about her. I've told her time and time again, my son just wouldn't run off. He's an obedient, good lad. He knows his place. He knows I need him at home. I need his help bringing in the goods, the the, the crops. He knows not to run off. I tell you, it was that darned creature. It came here, it absconded with him, ran off into the wood with him. All right, yeah, so I'm going to attempt to make a psychic contact and then use my calm ability to, to bring them down. Okay. So okay. it looks like a psychic contact is a minor action. Which I can do, but then once I have that connection, assume they don't oppose it, uh, I can use the calm action. So psychic connection, minor action, the TN is seven or greater based on familiarity. And I'm looking at the chart and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. The modifier is zero if they're present. And then it goes up if they're like very familiar or somewhat familiar. Basically, the further away you are, the least familiar you are with them, the harder it is. So if you're like face to face with someone, it's easier than if they're like in another city. Gotcha. Okay. I was, mm-hmm. cause I wasn't sure if the, like, I almost feel like the, the wording familiar is a bad word to use there. It should be more like how close we are in proximity rather than. Well, there, there's two pieces to it. Cause it, it depends on how well you know the other person, but also physical proximity. Right. So right. that's why I'm, again, I'm having a hard time cause the yeah, present means it plus zero, but like slightly familiar. I don't really know this dude. So is it the plus zero present or is it the plus seven or plus 10 slightly familiar? Cause I was like, I have, I'm on both sides of that spectrum here. Mm-hmm. Cause it's seven different... plus whatever modifiers you think it deserves. Right. There's basically different factors that can all apply a uh, stack as it were. You can add on to the difficulty of the target number to try to make sure that this happens. Um, I think right now, because yeah, you are coming into here, you have, you, you know, you're strangers to this town. You can tell he's a bit hostile. So although it starts at seven, I think we're just going to make this a nine because he's already a little bit difficult. So you have to roll uh, basically nine or higher. Okay, to yeah, six- I got 14 for the psychic oh, okay. contact. Um, okay. No stunt points. Uh, and then once I have that, I can use, it's a major action to do the calming, which is an opposed role against their willpower slash self-discipline. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I'm also rolling the 3d6. Going to add together. Plus. Okay. It's going to give me a total of 11. So I got a 19, but no stone okay. points. Okay. So you reach out by beating the target number. The ability works. Uh, you feel the flow of the arc- arcana, the magics, I guess you could say, channel through you. You connect with the man's mind, his spirit, as it were. There's a bit of a calming presence that you kind of just slowly ease into him. And there's a moment where he continues his rant. I told her that it was... I just... Oh, he just kind of gets a hold of himself. You see, he wrings his hands together. Oh, you know... Oh, I'm glad I have somebody to vent to. You know, you're a, you're a fellow traveler, and you, know, you seem to be somebody who you know understands what I'm saying here, so... Just, you know what? Thanks for just letting me speak to you for a moment. I uh, of course, feel better so, already. Yeah, when you're nervous, I'm sure you're concerned about your child. You want nothing but the best for them, and and they're they're gone, and you're worried, and you're wanting more help than you get. I can clearly understand you're being upset, but these people are wanting to help you as am I, my companion. So why don't I get some additional information, and and we will certainly look for your son. Uh, so I go through like you know, what's your name? Mm-hmm. What's the boy's name? Is there a partner, a, a wife in the picture? Uh, any places they like to hang out? Like, is there a cool rock by the river that they go to sometimes? <laughs> so just trying to get all the information I can, uh, specifically like the name and if there's have any known like hangout places. Right. Yeah. So this gentleman tells you uh, that his name is Yatos Yurtano, and he basically is a, a local here. Uh, his son is a young man whose name is, <clears throat> excuse me, is, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, Marcus, and he tells you that the boy is approaching his 10th summer, so he's relatively young. He would know that he, you know, he's smart enough to know not to venture out, to go out into the woods. The woods can be dangerous as far as this man is concerned. You've been through the woods. You know they're not dangerous. There are dangerous things that reside there, but the woods themselves are not inherently dangerous. But small town thinking this man seems to have. Uh, but yeah, he tells you that several days ago that there was a wolf 
that skulked about and snuck up on his son and attempted to eat his son while his son was picking mushrooms. Luckily, he chased the beast off and he brought his son back to be safe. And luckily, he hasn't seen the wolf again or had anything. And he's had people looking he, and, you know, he's made sure. But luckily, everything was OK. But his son just disappeared uh, while, when he went to find him yesterday morning. He didn't know where he was. So it would seem he disappeared during that night before. And this seems to line up with where when uh, Frostwind told you the last time that he had seen Greymane. OK, so I'm not going to confront dad right now how, with his ignorance, because I don't think that's helpful. But I'm just going to keep like manipulating words like I'll do everything to protect your son, whatever your son needs. I'll make sure your son is unhurt, not necessarily saying we're going to take the wolf away or anything like that. Uh, just trying to get ask in. him where the ask him where the kid last was. Uh, yeah. So w- where did you last see your son and, and where what where did this encounter actually happen when you uh, had to drive off the, the, the animal that was nearby? Well, the actual, the beast came up. It was on the western side of town. It was, there's a small grove where we picked the morels. And we were out there and the beast came about out of the the dark. It came up out of the brush, snuck up upon him. It was, like I said, going to snatch him up before I chased it off. Um, And you know that off to the west was kind of the area where you came with Frostwind. So it's kind of like back the area you guys were just in. Okay. Um, You didn't notice a patch of mushrooms when you came in, but it could, you know, there's areas it could be in. Okay. And I'll I'll do some subtle, you know, manipulation here that, yeah, understanding, you know, animal behavior takes years and years of study and it's entirely possible that what we see might not be what we thought we saw type of thing. But, but again, our concern is your son's welfare and we're going to do everything we can to see that they're okay. Um, and then basically say, you know, why don't you go home, work on these chores that you now have to do so low so that you don't get too far behind. And as soon as we have any word, we will uh, make our way to you. And I'll, you know, I don't know if I'm connected to a house or anything, but I'll make him a pledge on, you know, house ball drag that I will do everything I can as well as communicate whatever happens. Yeah, absolutely. If you could, uh, please go ahead and make a communication persuasion roll again, 3d6, add them together. If there's doubles, you get stunting points. All right. So I did get stunt points, six, eight, ten. It's only a 12 with two okay. stunt points. Okay. Uh, well, 12, uh, 12 is enough. 12 is was the target number for this specific thing to calm him down and get him to kind of leave. Uh, so basically what you have with your stunting points is you can use those towards the uh, interaction. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of different charts in the core rulebook. There's combat uh, stunts. There's magic. Yes, there we go. Kaylee's got them <laughs> flashing around there. Um, very cool. Lots of different options. I'm sure we will not explore all of them this evening just because there are so many. Um, but we'll hit all the main fun ones. But uh, um, I think with the 12, though, we don't really need to worry about anything out of the ordinary for now. It does take some time to kind of go through them all. But uh, he just gives you a nod. Yeah, somebody's speaking sense. Well, you know what? I appreciate your help in this. And uh, when you find that boy, you tell him that he needs to get home as soon as possible. I need... The crops brought in. My internet's the... froze for a second there. I'm sorry. So I don't oh, know. Oh, okay. But I think we're good now. So just carry on. Otelia, you make your way to the matronly woman. You see that she just watches after this gentleman, just kind of just bewildered at his his actions. My friend will be able to get him calmed down. Well, what is what is going on? Well, is a child in danger. Yes. Uh, I apologize, Traveler. Uh, there's no suspicion of any wrongdoings here. There's just a bit of a misconcern. I believe the, the boy has gone off to perhaps explore. He is young. All, all the boys in the town do this sort of thing. They wish to go out, explore, become men in their own way. And his father's just taking it heavy, I guess you could say. But uh, forgive me, I am Lenya Niren, and I am the headwoman of Red Briar. Our village is in the midst of these unhappy times, as you can see, but uh, how can I help you exactly? I I wish to give you a better welcome than you just received. (laughs) I'm Ortelia Dolbrook, and we're just travelers traveling through, but to hear that a child may be lost, if there's anything we can do to assist. There are places that the children tend to go um, that are popular with them. If there's, you know of where the child last was. So we can maybe see if we can follow his trail. Oh, of course, of course. Well, the 
Uh, if we could, real quick, um, let's have you or tell you just make a communication etiquette roll. Um, I mean, there isn't a, a negative, a penalty for if this roll doesn't succeed. I just want to see if you get a further bonus in the scene for uh, approaching her this way. Ten. Okay. Ten even. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, so for the rest of the scene, I'm going to give you a small bonus for your interactions with her because you've approached her. You've been a, a, a calm, nice presence here, so she <laughs> welcomes that. Um, she looks back to you and she says, well, his father says that he was you know, out tending to the crops. He had come in and he did not find him in the morn. I dare to think that the boy went off in the night. You know, he has some friends in the village, but they don't seem to be anyone who has any sort of problems. They're just boys being boys, as these things go. His father did speak of a wolf that they had come across uh, several days before that, and it was an initial concern that perhaps the wolves returned, but we went looking and we found no sign. But, uh, well, I don't think anything negative has happened to the boy, but I think, and she looks towards the direction where you kind of glance back and see that your friend Malachi is wrapping up the conversation with this uh, annoyed gentleman who seems to be a little calmer now. She says, well, um, the boy does not have the best home life. His mother passed some seasons ago, and his father has a bit of an anger because of that. Um, I don't think he does not... I, I, well, let me rephrase. I know that he loves his son, as all parents do, but he is hard on him, and it, it is tough to see sometimes. But with that said, I do not think the boy ran away. I think perhaps he was just trying to get a little bit of some time to himself, if you understand what I mean. Do the boys have a particular place they'd like to congregate, a swimming hole, fishing location, a tree fort? Well, it's funny you should mention that. There is a bit of a small... I guess you could call it a fort that the, some of the boys in a previous generation built. It's on the edge of the town, uh, just to the east of here, down, and she points uh, in the opposite direction that you all come in at. There's a small little uh, beaten path that goes off into a different section of the woods. That's about a quarter of a mile that direction. Um, you're more than welcome to go and look there. I mean, we've looked as well, but if you believe that you may find something that we cannot, uh, I'd be more than happy to have any help that we can get. I think that'll be a fantastic place to start uh, after uh, my friend is done speaking with the father. Uh, maybe we can get a quick meal. We've been traveling all day and then head out that way to look and see what we can discover. Perfect. During this time, uh, Chaya, what have you been up to? Chaya was attempting to be slightly circumspect and go find the, new, the, the source of that uh, smokehouse yeah. smell. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um let's go ahead. Well, the smells are kind of coming from all over, but you have honed a sense as being a badger, as it were. Um go ahead and make a perception smelling roll for me to see if you can pinpoint exactly where that might be coming from. Thirteen. Okay. It's definitely coming from the northern side of the village here. And as you draw closer to that area, the smell does get more pronounced. And what you find is a single story building. It is made of logs. You can see that there is several different stone uh, smokers that are on the side and they mm -hmm. are just pluming out this rich smelling smoke. And you can tell that the meats are definitely being smoked in there. Is there anybody nearby? There is a gentleman, looks to be a human, who is standing nearby. He's tending to the flames. There is also a boy who's probably maybe 10 or 11, who is nearby, who looks like he's maybe grabbing up some firewood just off to the side, uh, probably about five or 10 feet away from the, the man. Okay. Uh, kind of looking around, and I'll go up. I'll, I'll like, walk up to them and okay. uh, do the psychic equivalent of knocking. Okay. They both look up and look around and then notice you and the, the gentleman. Ah, oh, yes. Hello there, friend. Uh, you look like you're a bit hungry. I might have something for you. And he turns and he starts pulling out different things and whatnot. Um, he looks to his son. Look, boy, it's one of the riding. We are blessed this day. Uh, we have made a new friend. Look, and he, you know, basically motions for you. And the son comes up. He's very excited, very interested in what you're doing. And uh, are you going to find Marcus? The boy says as he approaches mm. you. 
Well, Matt, yes, that is exactly why I am here. Not at all because of your in, the incredible smells that you are putting into the air uh, and the meats that look incredibly well made and delicious. Uh, when my companions arrive here, they are going to definitely want to purchase some of your wares. Um, and I would definitely, that's exactly not why I was here. I was here talking about your friend Marcus. Uh, have you, do you know where he went? Or where he might hang out? The boy looks around as if maybe he wants to tell you something he's not supposed to tell you. Uh, sir, good sir, could you wrap up two pounds of that meat? Uh, my friends will be along shortly. One of them's talking to the head woman. The other one is talking to some very angry person who I think is Marcus's uh, ass, uh, father. Yes, of course. I'd be happy to, friend. And he turns and he starts getting those things ready for you. Private channel to the boy. All right, we're alone. Spell, kid. He looks at you and he leans in close. Are you an adventurer? Are you a hero? I have been called those things. Knew it, he says. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. As soon as you walked up with those other two, I knew the three of you were heroes. You're going back to the castle, aren't you? You know about the castle? We all know about the castle. It's too far for us to go there. Our parents won't let us leave. We can't go past the fort that we built just a little bit outside the village, but we know about the castle. We I, know the adventure there. I note which direction he pointed when he said the fort. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, and you think Marcus may have gone there? I don't know. He might have. He told me a secret. He told me not to tell anybody, especially his dad or the other grown-ups, but I can I'm, tell you. Of course. I'm not a grown-up. He said that there was a wolf that came here. It's one of the wolves like you. She's very smart, and she can talk to him in his mind. Mm -hmm. And she said that they have to go on an adventure together. That actually tracks. That's, that's exactly what has happened. You're, you're, you're very perceptive, young man. He told me, I think, that they were going to run off to the castle. That seems ill-advised, but we can check up on them. He is correct, though. That, that, that wolf was looking for him. Yeah, I, well, he, of course. Yeah, he knew that. Yeah, he's right. He's very smart. Yep. And you are very smart, too, because you're keeping these things on the quiet and and like chaya actually taps her snout on the dl yeah. as the kids say that's right <laughs> Ugh, children Ugh, anyway oh uh relay to the other two i think i have a line on the kid somebody come here and pay for all this meat um, there's you <laughs> all right because chaya has like a couple like like slings on them like 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 almost a bandolier with a couple things like a small pouch but she lacks really fine control to handle a lot of money and things like that but there's some basic supplies that she does carry but most of the supplies are carried by her people with hands mm -hmm. yeah. yeah thumbs are useful mm -hmm. thumbs are true. useful <laughs> so i think give you two a hey. that's right <laughs> he's got two thumbs yeah. and opposable thumbs that's, <laughs> that's right <laughs> yep. As soon as I finish with the head woman, I go and take care of the wonderful smelling meat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Snacks. Yes. yes, you all reconvene. And what you're actually surprised to discover when you, were, you go up and you meet with Chaya is that the gentleman who is smoking these meats, he actually has wrapped up. It looks about two pounds or so of it. But he's also given a small little, looks like a, a wicker plate type of situation, a little uh, serving that he hands one to each of the three of you. This is the least I can do for you three adventurers who are going to find the boy. I've got a good feeling about the three of you. A good feeling indeed. As well you should. We are uh, in, we are adventurers and intrepid at that. Yes. <laughs> and he gives you a punch on the shoulder, Mal. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, what? <laughs> yeah, I, I stumble sideways because I was not expecting that at all. So what is the little wicker plate? It's just a small little plate um, like that a has a tray. Yeah, something? like a serving. Yeah, it's like a like a. He's giving you guys. A, he's giving you guys a, a dinner. I guess you could say he's giving you oh. guys a free. 
spring meal. Again. We got we got to upgrade it to the platter instead of there the you go. There you go. fries and a drink. Yeah, each one has some smoked meat on it, um, and uh, you know, some like a bread of some sort, maybe some oh. vegetables, things of that nature. Okay, snack break. Then we go off to. Yeah, I lunch. would advise like eating as we go, but I'm not sure Chaya can do that. Um, so we will we will set long enough for Chaya to eat, and then uh, I'll if I'm not done, I will. Yeah, Carry Chaya is already eating. Okay, so we'll take <laughs> so we, we can kind of reconvene, and it. I'll, I will assume that we've all communicated to each other. So it seems like there are people in this village who are very aware of the rye bond, but dad's not, or he's prejudiced against it. So I think we're going to have to be cautious about that. Uh, so not only do you need to make sure the kid's okay, but reintroducing the new bonded pair back into the village is going to take some delicacy. Mm-hmm. It sounds like the dad's just a closed minded idiot. Uh, probably turned that way because the death of the woman, uh, that was his partner and has been taking it out on the kid. Uh, we should make sure the kid's going to be okay coming back here. Mm-hmm. Otherwise we could take him back to Aldous. Uh, you know, I, maybe they had, maybe they would have a place at the college. Possibly. Certainly something to consider, but let's, uh, let's find the pair first and then we will worry about those details. Kid said that the castle is that way on out past their fort. Mm-hmm. And uh, the head woman told me about the fort. So I think that's the best place to start. So not surprising, Dad's the least educated about what his kids are doing. Right. I'm, I'm really happens. not surprised. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all righty. So after a quick little rest where you all eat, and it is delicious, uh, very well uh, prepared food. He praises <laughs> upon the smoker. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, the three of you make your way off towards the uh, Eastern Trail that the uh, that the head woman had pointed out to you, and you make your way out there. You travel for about a quarter of a mile, and as you travel, again, through the serene forest, you eventually come to what looks like a small house, I guess you could say, but it has an open roof to it. It's kind of ramshackle looking. It looks a little bit older, maybe at least 40 years or so. It looks like something that children built to play in, a small little house, um, but it's seen somewhere because it's been out in the woods, uh, you know, uncovered, but it's still sturdy. And as you approach, you can see that there is uh on the one side of it, there looks to be a blanket of some sort, a quilt, I guess you could say, that is hanging over a semi-missing part of the wall. Um, apparently, this passes for kids repairing it as it falls apart over time. But um, what do you all want to do? I definitely want to search around and inside the fort to see if I can discover anything. Okay. Okay. All righty, let's have you go ahead. Let's make you do a perception. Uh, we'll call this a searching roll or seeing roll, whichever you think you'd rather do. If, you, if you're if you actively g- going in there and mm. rifling through things, or if you're just going to stop and spot around. And any of you can make this check if you'd like. 16 with doubles oh, and four stud that's, points. Absolutely. That's fantastic. I love that. So while Otelia is doing this, I'm I'm looking like I'm helping, but I'm actually not. I'm actually <laughs> doing some reinforcements to the fort because this reminds me a lot of something me and my sister Mira would have built as kids. Uh, so I will take a few moments and move things around, but I'm really just like helping to like refortify it so it's in better condition. No, oh, great! I love that. I love that. Uh, Chaya actually is like casting around trying to catch scent of the kid, but there's so many different kid scents here that uh, they can't they can't make heads or tails out of it. I rolled a six. Yeah, yeah, so. you're not picking up anything. Yeah, like you said, there's just so many. They have a similar scent, but you can tell there's many of them. It, it seems like maybe a group of boys, children have come through here, so you can't pick out the exact scent. Um, and yep. there doesn't seem to be any wolf scent in here either. Mm-hmm. So you're not sure what's going on with that. Um, as you're looking around, Ortelia, you can see that just inside the fort, there is a small little, what looks like a bed almost, uh, a grouping of different, uh, for lack of a description, pillows, types of soft material that's off in the one corner. And you can see that in amongst it is a little bit of some hair, some fur, uh, that is like a, like a really light whitish type color. And also you see that there is a note that's in here kind of uh, folded up uh, very neatly and it's laying in the center of the area and it has a name on the front 
one you don't recognize. It says Timothy on it. Take a look at that. And when you open it, you find a short letter. It seems to be written by a child's hand uh, or an adult who's not very literate. Um, and it says, Timothy, I've done it. My friend and I are going off on an adventure. We're going to the castle to have a grand adventure. I'll be back when I get back. You are my best friend, and I will see you again soon. Marcus. We have itinerary. <laughs> They're heading for the castle. Yeah, well, at least we know that's true. So anyone know anything about a castle nearby? Well, any of you can make a intelligence, historical lore, or military lore to perhaps have some insight as to a nearby castle. I'm going to pass on that because I asked the question and obviously I don't know. <laughs> okay. I think that's fair. <laughs> okay. So my roll was 14, but I got two sixes. Oh, wow. Nice. Nice. Love that. So my total was 14. 14 with six stunt points. Okay. It's got me beat, so I'll just let Otalia take this one. Okay. <clears throat> You know, Ortelia, um, probably because of your uh, experience, we'll say, of years of going through around and adventuring a little bit longer than these other two, that in the time of the war from before, when the uh, Kern Empire was sending scouts into this area to try to seek out and find new areas to try to claim and set up different encampments of this nature, that there was a fort that was structured about a day maybe a day and a half's walk from here to the uh, southeast. You know that this specific fort, there was purportedly, it was where they sent a big battalion of theirs. And when they sent the battalion, for some reason, the battalion seemed to never have arrived. But before they went to investigate and look into it, the war came to an end. And so they just kind of left it and forgot about it. I relay this information. To the other two. I, hmm. I kind of remember something similar. I rolled pretty well, but yeah. <laughs> Didn't have as much clarity sort of around it as you did. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, and is there any stunting points you would like to use in this moment, Ortelia, for additional information or anything with your um, exploration well, stunts? While she's thinking, you mentioned earlier that Chaya couldn't pick up wolf scent, but if we have wolf fur, could we like try that again? Like specifically here, sniff this. Yeah. I don't know. Again, I don't yeah. know how much badgers are like bloodhounds, but I feel like that should give us something. <laughs> I think it's I, worth a roll for sure. Well, now that I know which direction the uh, castle is, I'm going to focus my attention on that area. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and make another roll for me. Again, this is a perception smelling roll. Uh, 14. Okay. Yeah. That's a lot better than the six we had before. Yeah. Yeah, you do get a faint smell of wolf scent here. You get a faint trail uh, going off in the same direction you all are headed. So you know, this this bodes well. I think I got him. It smells like wet dog. That's pretty much wolf, right? <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to see one that necessarily makes sense. For this. Well, you don't necessarily but, have to. I was just making yeah, sure you, no, I'm just you saying... wanted to. Because you had six of them, so. Yeah. Well, it's, I definitely have a lot of, that's a lot of information in terms of, like, knowing that the battalion was there and mm -hmm. left. And this is Kern, which is not the friendliest of places. I've noticed from playing Blue Rose in the past, the worst thing to get uh, per, uh, stunt points on is perception. Because it's like, I mean, okay, yeah. that's great, but yeah, so I, I've seen it. Now what else do I perceive? Well, then I'll put it. I'll put it this way, Ortelia. You know a little bit more about Kern than perhaps your companions do. I mean, everybody knows that Kern is a warlike nation that was actually ruled over by a being known as the Lich King, and he used his magical capabilities to create strange, dark presences and armies that were eventually put down by the forces of good. So that is good. Um, but you know, from maybe your travels, that there are rumors that there is darkness in areas that might reach out towards adventurers from time to time but luckily uh, good triumphs over such things so no one's really had any need to be worried about war or strife since the lich king was defeated all those years ago 
there's still the shadow, the other uh, shadow kings that are still trying to take over that space, though. So hearing Kern makes makes me think there's the possibility of dark forces at work. And this kid with child with the beginnings of a rye bond is at a very vulnerable place. And getting close to something that could be that dark could be very dangerous for them in terms of corruption. Absolutely. Is that there also an element to this rye bond as Chai was saying that they are formed in like need. So perhaps there is something that needs doing that they are off to do. So that doesn't kind of assume there is a danger or a potential of danger in, in front of them. And I hope that if that he's, if he has adept potential, then there becomes the worry with that. Perhaps Possible we should uh, make haste. Yes. Right. We'll walk a little faster. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll push myself on my bum leg. All right. So you take up the uh, the spear point of the walking formation for once. I'll say, Mal, as you begin to push your way through the forest. You will, I will quickly haste. fall behind. Like I will start off ahead, <laughs> like maybe 20 yards, and then it will very easily get surpassed. Okay, absolutely, absolutely. As you continue along, you, well, who would be taking the lead then? Probably Ortelia or maybe even... Um, I'd, I'd say if Chaya, Chaya can, if, if she's... Chaya, because she's got the scent. You're right, if they're able to yeah. keep tracking, they should be in front, I think. Because then I can actually go along a little at my pace and they have to walk my speed, so... And I'm not 100%. complaining. <laughs> For a change. I'd rather have accuracy than speed. Sure. We go. So as you continue along then, you notice that the wind in the trees starts to pick up a little bit, starts to get a little bit louder, starts to get a little bit more forceful. It's almost as if the dark uh, shadows that Ortelia mentioned in the ancient tale are kind of playing tricks on your mind for a moment. But as you continue along, trying to get your way towards this distant castle or outpost or whatever it might be, you are all suddenly surprised by the emergence of a large brown grizzly bear that comes out from some overgrowth up ahead and much like a mirror to the nice joyful warm greeting when you met Frostwind, this bear stumbles out into the path that you're all forging through the wood instead however their intent looks very rather rude and sinister indeed you can tell this bear is not very pleased to see the three of you approaching as the bear sees you, she almost as quickly as she arrives, she rears up on her back legs and she throws out a mighty roar that breaks all the silence of the area. You could hear the bird song instantly cut off. And even there is sounds of birds that take flight to get out of the area. Oh, um, what do we do? Al, what do we do? <laughs> is there anything really quick any of you would like to do before we perhaps encounter this bear in a little bit more hostile manner? So... I Again, uh, I have the ability to calm animals, but I feel like we've already done that. So I think we just let's just fight it. Let's fight it. Yeah. <laughs> what can go wrong? I, right? I, we're I first level using... characters. We're fine. Yeah, we're good, right? <laughs> Actually, I'm using self discipline to not give in to run away, run away, run away, because that's a <laughs> bad idea with a bear, even if it's terrifying. I'd rather face people, multiple yes. people, than a bear. All right. Uh, are you going to do anything uh, before we get started here, uh, uh, Chaya? Or... Uh, Chaya will just growl back at it. Oh, yes. She loves that. <laughs> got a 16 on my self-discipline. I am not going to run. <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah, you are gritting down. You're kind of squeezing your hand together. Your knuckles are white and you are not running. So as the bear rolls throws back and said, let's have everybody roll a dexterity initiative check, please. As it begins to snort and grunt and start running towards the three of you. Oh boy. So that's a good roll. Just going down the order here. Well, then Malachi, what did you get? 16 with five stunt points, if that matters. Um, doesn't really do anything on initiative. Unfortunately, it's another thing that kind of just, they're it, there. it's fine. It helps kind of break ties, I guess you could say. Um, so 16. Uh, and Chaya, what'd you get? 17. Nice. Ooh. Ortelia, did you get an 18 to make this interesting? No, I got a 12. Oh, 12? Oh, yeah, that's okay. And Mama Bear here is going to go on a 14. 
Okay, so as the bear roars and begins to come charging in towards the three of you, Chaya, you are the first to react. You are uh, one of the Raiden, so you have uh, inherent speed and battle presence about yourself because you are used to defending yourself against large, big, scary creatures like this. So what would you like to do to start this off? Now, on so your turn, you're going to have an action that is a major action and a minor action. Um, and you, I'm sorry, two minor actions, and you can interchange, uh, like you can give up a minor action, uh, major action, do minor action, things of this nature. So for you at home, a uh, minor, a major action would be things like attacking, uh, our manifesting arcana or magic for layman, um, or other different abilities like this. And minor actions would be things like pulling out a weapon or stowing something or interacting somehow, uh, movement, things of this nature. So, okay. How far away is he? I would say the bear is at this point, um, we'll say, uh, we'll make it typical. Uh, we'll say they are currently 30 feet away, just to make it simple. Okay, so my speed is eight. That'd be eight I'm... squares. We don't really have a battle map in front of us. So, so that'd the... be, we'll convert this a little bit because Fantasy Age and Blue Rose does use uh, yards and stuff, but we'll just make it simple. We'll do the five foot movement. So eight squares okay. would be basically 40 feet. Okay. You're fast uh, I'm not going to be able to charge, but I will uh, move towards them, mm -hmm. and then I will. Yeah, uh, this this fits Chaya pretty much. I'm going to do an all-out attack. Oh, all right. So there is a hissing snarl, and Chaya leaps across the ground, like legs churning. And as she closes with the bear, and the bear is kind of galumphing forward, she is going to try and dive underneath and rake at its underbelly. Oh, excellent, excellent. Whoa, okay. That is one of the best rolls I've had all week. Uh, okay, it's Monday. That doesn't really count very much. Yeah. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> that is 17. That is a 20 with claw. Nice. Okay. That is... With five stunt points. Oh, boy. Yeah. Wow. So that is definitely going to beat her defense of 11. Uh, you have to roll equal to or higher, just like in typical games. Yep. Um, so, yeah, uh, your damage for your uh, claw is going to be? Uh, it's 1d6 plus 3. I'm going to spend um, not that one. Can't do that. Ooh, I could do that though. There's so many great options on these stunting charts. It's really the bread and butter of the system, and it's it's, it's you just you just want to do them all. Okay. But what so is nice I'm... for folks at home, real quick, is you can use the points um, in a manner of say you have five, you could do one five point stunt, you could do one that's two, one and th and three, so you can do multiple stunts. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some stunts that let you use multiple points to sink into a single thing to make it stronger. Um, we'll try to explain those as we play along. So. Yep. Sorry, I'm, since I have five stunt points, I am going to spend uh, two on Pierce armor. So his armor rating will be halved versus this okay. attack. Uh, and then I'm going to spend... Oh, uh, poop. I forgot what the other thing I was going to do because it was going to be cool. <laughs> oh, th okay. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to spend two on knock prone because I went for a hamstring strike i'm gonna say I, I was going for the belly but she was kind of coming up so i i shifted and went for the hang hamstring trying to knock her prone and then i will use uh one point on skirmish to scurry away after the damage okay okay absolutely so i'm kind of just cheesing her off eight points of damage eight okay it's a nice, powerful strike as you slice in, yeah, and you hamstring, you rake across uh, the back of her leg, and then there's a kind of growl as she feels it. Um, she does actually get knocked back off of her feet, and she stumbles back onto her back as you knock her prone, and you dodge out of the way with a skirmish, and you kind of move back and forth in a pouncing manner, just ready for more battle should it come. Yep, so uh, what the prone does is anybody who... Uh, makes a melee attack. It's a plus one bonus to the attack roll. Mm -hmm. Love it. Until they get up, of course. Which, right. So, Artelia, your primary weapon. weapon is a bow, correct? Um, I bow and I have hatchets and a sword. Also, okay. Uh, 
which are you planning on? Like, what do I see you going for? As oh, the bow. The bow. Okay. I'm uh, not, I mean, not close. I'm, but I'm still at a reasonable range. So again, he's, I play fantasy age a couple of times, but I'm not super familiar. I know that if I increase your dexterity, that will make it easier for you to hit the creature. Mm-hmm. Does it also increase your damage? Is that separate or can you even do that? It's yeah. accuracy for accuracy bow. for bows. Yep. Yep. So will that increase both two hit and two damage possibilities? Um, no, because the damage is, is based no, the on damage, the, the damage comes uh, um, it comes from the bow. Okay. So I don't have a lot of offensive capabilities, and I'm certainly not going to try to whack this thing with my stick. Uh, so I'm going to start by increasing your dexterity just so that you're more prowess uh, at this. So I'm gonna try. I would, I would increase her accuracy. accuracy. Okay. The accuracy. Yeah, the accuracy is better for, yeah, because all of your attacks with the bow are going to be made with accuracy score rather than your dexterity score. Okay. Uh, perfect. Okay, so then I will. On the enhancement description, it says you can, div- it says divine. I think it means divide the bonus between strength and dexterity. So can I, I don't know if I can oh. choose accuracy. Uh, it's a bow. I'm trying to remember. Hold on. You might get the damage bonus from dexterity. Sorry, I know I'm bringing this to a screeching halt. My apologies. No, you're That's fine. Okay. You're fine. Yeah, the attack roll for a bow is going to be your accuracy, and then damage is going to basically be a die type based upon the weapon. Um, you do get a bonus if you have focuses on that, and also based on what it uses. So in this okay. case, for example, being a bow, if you have a bonus to your accuracy, that's what gives you okay. additional damage. So it does, seems weird. That doesn't seem like that would work. So, hmm. oh. All right. Can I hold and then let Ortelia go first, and then decide what I'm going to do based on what happens? Yeah, you you can hold. Yeah, you can basically delay. And, okay. Uh, ready, basically, is what it's called in the game. You can ready and kind of do something later. That's okay. fine. Yeah. I have n- almost no offensive capabilities. So okay. All right. So <laughs> I will let her tell you go first. All right then. Uh, well, before she goes, the bear is going to go. The bear is basically going to use uh, their movement. They're going to get back up, back up to their feet. <laughs> come back at you and actually she's going to give it right back to you Chaya which I'm sure probably makes sense not very pleased with you raking at her okay that is a 14 against your defense all right uh you gotta actually get a plus one because I did all out attack so that is more than a hit yes okay all right then so the, the damage she's just doing a bite uh the damage for the bite no stunt points on that is going to be 1d6 plus 7 Oof. which is going to be 9 she All went right. pretty low but these are first level characters y'all so yeah they're I not just finished looking up the bow thing the strength would be great for anything other than the bow bows use perception for additional damage oh perception that's what it is excuse me yep right. it's accuracy to hit it's perception for the damage yep Thank you. So I can give you a bonus to strength if you want to go with your hatches. If you want to use a bow, then I'll just do something else. Uh, If I I remember correctly, Kevin, uh, armor subtracts from damage, correct? It does. Yeah. If you have an armor rating, I have to be taken away from the damage. Yep. Um, Now, in your case, because you had used a stunt to affect. Oh, no. I'm sorry. You did not do that. Never mind. Okay. I am not minding. All right, so um, okay, yeah. So that then the bear is back up on her feet. So with that, Ortelia, it is your turn. All right, so and I am within six yards of the bear. Good, yeah. Because that gives me additional damage with my bow if I hit. Eleven. 11 hits her defense exactly. All righty. So, get plus one damage. So, ooh. 11 points of damage. Woohoo. Oh, the right. six. All right. 
it is a powerful shot. You hit her right in the flank, and it spins her. She actually almost falls back down. She just growls, grits her teeth. You can see that she is uh, quite angry at that. If she wasn't angry enough already, she's loving that. So, <laughs> Is that it for your turn, then? That's it for my turn. Okay. Malachi, you are kind of ready in your action. Did you want to release that now or just let the round kind of pass by? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do something stupid. Uh, so despite the fact this is a dumb idea, I am actually going to end up hitting the bear with my staff. Uh, having seen Chaya get sort of raked, I'm going to rush over and try to interpose myself between them to make sure Chaya is okay. And I'm just going to whack it in the head with my staff. Okay. All righty. That is going to be a fighting role because it is a staff. <laughs> oh, okay, so I rolled really well. That's a a twenty total with six. Oh, I know. Points. I'm sorry. It's a staff. That's accuracy. I'm sorry. A staff is based on your accuracy score. Excuse me. So yeah, um, so I'll just go with lethal blow and right. uh, do three d six damage instead of one d six. So I really hit in the head. Yes, lethal bl blow is a favored stunt by a lot of players. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. 10, 10, 12, that's, that's 13 total. Oof. And then I still have one left. So I'm going to skirmish, and I'm going to move the target backwards two yards again, trying to push it away from Chaya. Okay. Two yards in the system would basically be one square. Sure. So basically what you do is, yeah, you move forward, you take the staff, you bring it over, and you crack her right in the side of the face. Oh, she flings her head off to the side and staggers back out of the range of all of you, shaking her head, trying to get her bearings about herself. She looks up at all of you again. And I do and the classic, get on, yeah, yeah. trying to, you know, get on, get on, get on. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh my good. I love it. All right, back to the top. It's gonna to be Chaya. You guys are still in the middle of this. The bear is not relenting. Um, but it's your turn. Okay. Uh I'm going to just do a uh so as it uh, turns to get smacked in the snout with a stick, I'm going to again go in and try and claw at it. All right. Well, I'm right there, right? So actually, hang on. I am going to do a minor action to kind of watch for an opening. And when it turns to like snap at Malachi, I'm going to uh, use my aim to get a plus one to attack. Absolutely. Gonna aim. Yep. That's always a great minor action to take if you're going to bide your time. Sure. Okay. I do not hit her defense. So oh, no. okay. she sees it coming and dodges out of the way. Yeah. All right. She does. Yeah, you stab through the empty air, and uh, it's going to be Malachi's turn because it's now back into the regular round. You're back in your regular spot, I guess. You All say. right. I am going to guard up as a minor action, and I'm going to do the plus two. So it's going to be plus two to my armor, but it uh, makes me essentially have a negative two on my attack as I try to whack it with the staff again. Yeah, you're basically going to fight defensively and try to allocate a little more defensive abilities to yourself. Sure. That is a 10 total. Uh, and actually, actually, it's an 8 because I got negative 2. So, yeah, whiff. Yeah, this time you swing the staff. And, yeah, she's ready for it. She brings up a paw, just yeah. swaps it away. <laughs> and she is quite angry still. And so she's going to go ahead and she's going to all-out attack against you. Um because you're right there. Yeah. So sorry, Mr. Mr. Mage here. Okay, still no stunting points, unfortunately, but the total is still gonna be a well, 13 plus 17. Oh, I, I know is gonna hit you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you said 13 so, for a second. I was like, ah, because with my plus two, it's currently 14, but it's not yes. 17. And for the damage, it is going to be 10. Okay. She bites down on your forearm. There is a snapping and a popping, crunching sound as she latches on really tightly, and she actually pulls you a little bit. Let's have you make a strength um, might roll, please, to see if you can get out of her grasp. Otherwise, she's going to pretty much grab a hold of you. Uh, 13. It's no, wait, opposing, hold on. Nine. Opposing to hers. 13. Yep, 13 even. 
Okay, you beat her by one because she rolled really low. So, <laughs> but you managed to rip your arm free and it tears off some of your sleeve. And yeah, there is uh, a nice wound there. Not oh, my your sleeve. Outfit. Your outfit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and Ortelia. All right, I'm going to aim to give myself a little bit of a bonus there. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm shooting another. Yep, you're still using the bow. 15 total. Yep, that'll do it. And damage. And I'm still within the six yards, so additional mm -hmm. damage. Five, nine, ten. Another ten damage. All right. Another arrow hits just next to the other one. Again, the bear just kind of recoils and just roars, urgh, stomps her feet a little bit. And uh, yeah, she's really mad. Throws her head back and roars again. Uh, Chaya, you know that this bear, the angrier it gets, the more dangerous it gets. You have dealt with other animals. This one is not a ride-in, so this one is a bit more feral, a bit more animalistic. It's still an animal of nature to be respected, but right now, it really, really, really wants to kill you and eat you all. So, what do you want to do? Uh, I'm going to attempt to, uh, I'm going to go for the throat with my claws this time. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hang on. That's combat stunts. I need actions. Do, 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 do. Actually, I'm going to delay for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I can use a free action to, to say something, right? And then yeah. delay my action action. Totally. Yep. Okay. Malachi. Threaten it with your staff again, and I'll go for its throat. Uh, so my suggestion is to you to use the aid ally major action. And then once Malachi does that, I will come in using that bonus. Oh, yeah. Well, teamwork. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So I'm going to basically use my action to aid your action. Mm -hmm. All righty. And you could still guard up while you're doing that's, that. That's too. What I'm to, yep. So I'm going to guard up, and okay, then I'm going to yep. aid ally. <laughs> like waving my staff and just flashing my beautiful bright blue eyes at it <laughs> blinking real slow <laughs> absolutely now you're now you're kind of bloody just like your eyes that's right <laughs> this is unbearable not <laughs> so pretty not in the face guys not in the face <laughs> now chai are you able to do that now or do you have to wait till your next turn to be able oh, to use i was delaying so i oh, would yeah. be able to step in now Perfect. All right. So that'll give me a plus two bonus to the next test and an additional minor action. So I will uh, watch for that. I'm aiming twice because I believe I can. Um, actually, no. I'm just going to. Oh, hang on. Okay. So my minor action last round was to prepare. That's what I should have done. Okay. Uh, and then I can basic, so it keeps my initiative spot and I prepared for him to you do his thing. Now I'm doing it, but I get another minor action that I'm going to use to aim. So I get a plus three total. Okay. Yep. That is right. And that is a decent roll. That's nine, 13, uh, 16, 18 with five stunt points again. Oof, and oh, this yeah. time I am using lethal blows. Okay. Okay. So. And oh my word. Oh my, oh my Scarlet. That's 5, 10, 15 plus 3. So 18 points of damage as Ooh. I go for the throat. Okay. So how this looks is Malachi, as you, it looks to a casual observer that you're flailing about and having a hard time, but really you are doing a feint to set up your ally. Oh no, I'm actually you... having a really hard time. It just is conveniently timed for Chaya. <laughs> I am what? flailing terrible. I love that even better. I love that even better. Yeah. You just, you're just a lucky guy. You <laughs> yeah. just happen to fall into these things the right way. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And you do, you open the bear, uh, chest and neck area wide open and there is your ally and as you surge forward Chaya, you bite right into the bear's throat, bear her down to the ground and soon the fight is over. You two both can hear as, as Chaya like digs her claws in and like pins the bear to the ground She's actually um, praying for the beast and giving thanks for its sacrifice and is and 
expressing her sorrow at having to kill just a defenseless, stupid animal. Yeah. Like Michael wanted to have a combat, but Malachi believes that this bear was in some way corrupted by dark forces and it was, would not have been able to be communicated with. So this unfortunately had to happen. Uh, after Chaya finishes their prayer, which I will stand by, uh, you know, in a, a thoughtful pose next to them, I will then heal Chaya if they will accept my healing touch. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, by the way, suggestion, Michael, uh-huh. do first aid first, okay, then do heal. You can sometimes get by a lot cheaper just doing first aid. <laughs> yeah, because you could restore restore some health from doing the first aid, which is more mundane before using up your magical abilities. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. As, as someone who played the healer for two and a half years, definitely do it that way. <laughs> so what what our role for first aid? Okay, first aid is going to be a, I believe that is a willpower role. No, I'm sorry, it's not. Um, it's on the action sheet, if I remember. Uh, intelligence. Focus oh, no, it's an action. Healing. Yeah. Thank you. Intelligence healing. Yep. TN11 intelligence healing. Oh, wow. There's a lot of intelligence focuses, y'all. So I did. Uh, oh, I got yeah. a. It's this long. I got a 14. No stunt points. Hey, what's okay. the drama die read? Uh, one. Hey, <laughs> what's your intelligence? Uh, three. Okay. I get four points back then just from that. All right. Uh, so healing. While doesn't... this is going on, the healing's going on, I'm going to go and carefully take my arrows out trying to be respectful of the animal okay. so i'm not just like yanking them out i'm like being cautious absolutely yeah you do so gingerly you've done this before and yeah you are respectful the three of you know that as you make your way through the woods you are kind of the outside element here so yeah you do take the time to respect the area and the the three of you maybe not so much malachi because he was just kind of falling into the scenario but definitely all of you in your own way respect what happened here and yeah you have a moment and yeah you retrieve your arrows and you are you know not uh doing anything to be harmful to the already defeated animal and uh the, the moment it's it's got a strange surreal serenity to it in this moment of you all kind of just the the fighting is over and the calmness comes back and the bird song starts again it's almost like the forest just returns uh you know a moment has happened and then life moves on so chai do you need additional healing uh you see that there's still a couple of uh couple one claw mark didn't heal like seal up quite right but uh she's like eh it's fine uh are one of you gonna dress this then she nods at the bear um i don't know that we have time well we shouldn't just leave her here to rot no i, I agree with that um we I, could field dress her and hang her in one of the trees that way the predators aren't going to get to her easily and then we can always come back for it or send the villagers back for it they may good. need the- that's a good idea all right while you're working on that i'm going to heal myself because i am very wounded <laughs> <laughs> yes okay i'll take care of that Twelve. okay all right so i got a 16 and i got three <clears throat> stunt points so that is three six so that's seven points back on my healing and I think with our kind of stunt points, I can like make that more beneficial. So one of the arcane stunts is to do additional damage. Can I do additional healing for the same stunt point? You know, I'll say, cause we're playing a one shot. Yeah, sure. Perfect. I was going to say, Kevin, we, I was going to mention that we always house rule that that would, if it makes sense, you're just yeah. pumping extra arcane energy into it. Mm-hmm. Right. So then I am back to full. Unfortunately, there's still a hole through my sleeve, and that makes me very oh, sad. Oh, no, my sleeve. Psychic damage. <laughs> that, right? Emotional <laughs> damage. Yeah, I'm poking, Emotional poking, damage. poking my finger through it, and just I look so sad. That's it. <laughs> oh, You know what? Of all the things that everyone loses the most in battle, it is, you know, their armor, their clothes, you know. You lose your sartorial elegance. It's It's very true, and that is the saddest part of battle, really. Uh, all right then so yes you take time to dress the bear respectfully hang it as you mentioned you gather up your things you uh, rest up you recuperate and you eventually get back onto the trail trying to find the lost boy and the lost riding wolf to make sure that they are brought back to safety 
Right. Uh, so again, just models. Just I'm trying to play with the stuff I can do. Um, yeah. I'm going to use Animal Messenger, and I'm going to send Ooh. one of my feathered friends back to the head lady at the village and tell her about the bear, so that she can send someone out to claim it for the village. Oh, perfect. Perhaps we'll have a okay. feast upon our uh, return. There we go. I love Try that. a nibbles on some of the entrails uh, that once the field dressing's done, and then finds the nearest stream to wash off in before we continue. And you do, in fact, continue on and travel for some time until eventually night begins to fall and you have to make a short camp. So you um, you all set up a campfire, a small little tent, and you rest. And you think about all the different things that are transpiring. You think about this lost boy and this lost wolf, perhaps out there alone at whatever this strange castle is. And the night passes rather uneventfully, which is kind of good in its own way, but... In the morning, you all feel rejuvenated, you all feel rested, you all feel ready and further emboldened to go and try to find this boy and this wolf. So as you awaken, you begin to make your way, you begin to travel again in the same direction you were heading before. Is there anything anybody wants to do during this time? Um, you don't necessarily have to, I'm just giving you guys options if there's anything flavor-wise you wish to do as part of the journey. You guys noticed that uh, ever since we, as we break camp and like for the first hour, uh, Chaya is like noticeably not in your heads, which is odd. So could you perhaps give us a little bit of a window about that, Kaylee? Why, why is that happening for us, the audience? Like, oh, I'm just going to wait and see if they asked. Oh, okay. Well then, you know what? Let me step back out of this then. Um, that was called yeah. foreshadowing. Oh, Yes. So I'm trying to figure out how Mal would respond to that. Like my, my Michael thought is that something to do with killing that bear and you just need some alone time. So I don't know that I would intrude unless I, I notice something about your behavior that like gives me additional insight that maybe you want to talk. Well, because, because I know your bond mate well. Mm -hmm. Like Chaya. I know Michael's not here. Are you okay? Uh, after a second, you hear, of course not, Michael's not here. I'm talking to him. Give me a minute, will you? And oh. you hear it disconnect again. All right. You're on call waiting. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then the All connection right. opens back up to you, too. Uh, sorry. Uh, it's really hard to reach Michael from here. So I was I was focusing. Uh, did you need something? Uh, no, I just wanted to be sure you were okay. Since Michael's not here, I wanted to be uh, sure. No, I, 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 did, I had to check in this morning. Uh, it, it's okay. Uh, Michael's undergoing, has tests today. It's it's fine. It's a whole thing. Uh, it's, it's, it's nothing to worry about. It's just random two-legged crap. It's just... <laughs> should be no, born knowing things, but nope. You got to learn it and get it in the... I think it's because your heads are so high up takes longer for you to learn things. I've noticed that with some people. Right. The taller they are, the stupider they are. <laughs> and you know Chaya is just doing this to because uh, she doesn't really think everybody is stupid or that humans are, you know, people are, mm -hmm. but it's just, it's a common grumble. Mm -hmm. And this is all going on as we walk down the walk through the woods. So if I'm reading my abilities correctly, I can actually make psychic contact with animals and also read their mind. It's, you know, again, it's still animal intelligence, but I'd like to see if I can call another bird with whistling and then like basically try to get a bird's eye view of what's around us. Like, is, does the bird know where the castle? Are they aware of any other dangers type of a thing? Sure, sure, absolutely. Uh, is there a um, is there a check involved with that, or do you? Yeah, you so there's a psychic that? contact I have to make first. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a TN seven, or if they're trying to resist me, then I have to get I have to overcome that. Okay. Uh, yeah, I crushed that. I got like a seventeen. Uh, nice. No stunt points, and then I have to do a mind reading, uh, which is opposed. So I think even though it's a willing subject, I still have to roll against them. I don't know. seems weird. Uh, but yeah, so I'll roll it. It's a communication, psychic, or animism. No, communication. Okay. 
Okay. Seven, ten. So I got a 13, but I did get some stuff points if it mattered. Okay. So first you reach off with your psychic connection to the animals around and you do feel the flittering emotions of a bird nearby. It does loop through the air several times and then draw closer and you feel that connect. Yes, yeah. definitely. You whistle, you feel that connection and it comes forward. It does land on your outperched finger for a moment. The two of you look and have eye contact for a moment. And it does that weird. Yeah. I'll have some like bur 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 bread crumbs, not bird crumbs. That's, Gross bread crumbs that I will feed it from my hand while we're that coming. was Chaya two nights ago. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, um, <laughs> and Fast. yeah, you make a connection with it, and uh, the uh, the bird uh, just kind of gives you a look and then it takes to the sky. And uh, you it, as it flies up, you uh, get general feelings from it about like how exactly it's interacting. Um, are you, now, are you trying to, you said you were trying to perceive, are you actually physically able to see through its eyes? Yeah. Senses, I don't think or? it's like beast master. Like I'm just seeing through its eyes as my eyes, but like I can, you can see something and then I will see what it sees, but it's, it's more like a photograph every so often gotcha. rather than like the end beast master style. If I'm reading correctly, sure. I think that's how it works. Okay. Yeah. That, that's perfect. Perfect. Um, yeah, and the bird flies on, and as you all uh, continue your journey together, you would, will check in with the bird from time to time to see, have these little snapshots of different areas, and eventually, again, after several hours, it's probably most of the day, actually, it gets to be early afternoon, and you, the bird actually gives you a, a vision of a site that there seems to be what looks to be a semi-dilapidated uh, keep of some sort off in the distance that you are headed. You can see uh, from the bird's glimpse that there is, looks to be maybe a dozen or so um, soldiers, maybe. Oh. They're wearing armor, but they look a little off. The bird saw from very high up, so you can't make out the, the details, but there's something odd about the way they're all standing around. All right. So, yeah, I will, you know, I will basically thank the bird and let it flutter on its way. And then I'll communicate this to Ortelia and Chaya that there are soldiers ahead, but it's hard to tell through the, to the link, but they seem off somehow. I don't know if that means they are enemies or something, but yeah, we need to be more careful perhaps. So I think maybe we should slow down and do a little bit more scouting. Yeah. Okay. So as Take you our walk time, make sure we're watching. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Caution is definitely of the uh, of the essence here. Um, as you all continue along, um, let's have you all just go ahead and make perception either seeing or, well, really, realistically, any of the perceptions uh, with sort of, um, I don't want to say argument, that might be the wrong kind of word, any sort of insight you might have about how you want to use one of the perceptions. We can maybe get an idea of what exactly you'll observe as you get closer and try to look at the area. You all come up against like a, a ridge that overlooks uh, not really a valley, but like a recessed area down below where you actually see part of the outline of this keep. So um, so we'll start with Malachi. How, how are you approaching this? Are you just looking? Or are you doing something different? So or? one of my perceptions is psychic. So I'm basically... Oh you know, looking out with my mind, I got a 12 total. Okay. Just trying to see if there's anything psychically that feels yeah. a little I guess, bit I guess I'm trying to make like, just brush up against these soldiers' consciousness to see if there's anything I can tell about them. Are they aggressive? Are they undead? If that's a thing, I don't even know if they are in this world type of a you know, situation. You reach out and they, unfortunately they are a little bit further away. So you're not able to get a really good grasp, but you do get kind of a surface feeling of the area itself. It's hard to describe, but it's almost like the keep has a presence to it, and it doesn't feel natural. It's a weird... I mean, you thought there was a malaise in that town where everybody was upset that this boy was gone. This is like that feeling amplified quite a bit. It almost feels like there is a despondency coming from the area of the keep. It's not coming from these soldiers. It's coming from the area itself, a feeling of fear, a feeling of confusion, and perhaps even a feeling of something you can't quite place your finger on. Hmm. Oh. But you can't you don't know what it is though with that role. I'll share with my companions. Um how about you, Ortelia? How what is it that you're trying to approach in terms of getting information about this area? 
Yeah. I was going to use searching because I'm keeping trying to look for signs of passage of their soldiers. Where did they come from? That kind of thing. I got a 16 with doubles. So five stun points. Mm, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you begin to look around, you do see that actually there are some tracks on the ground here. It looks like maybe recently, you know, before you all were in the area, maybe there was a little bit of a light rain, so there was a slight mud that kind of got formed up on the walking path through here, and you see that there is footprints of human make as well as wolf make next to them. They're very short. It's not like a big, long trail. You just catch a glimpse of it in a small little puddle, muddy area. And you do notice that off to the side of it, there are several boot marks of an irregular pattern. It doesn't look like somebody's walking. It almost looks like just strange boot imprints, almost like the boots were just kind of randomly, haphazardly pressed into the mud around the area. It would, it would maybe perhaps imply that the soldiers stopped pretty much where you're all standing right now and looked down at the keep or studied it or something before moving on the best you can gauge out of it i think i'm going to use the points for additional bone an additional plus one bonus to further test the object of your attention you get a plus one bonus to further test to examine or perceive additional aspects of the object of your test until the time or venue changes mm, okay so You're i can use keep all... track of what's going on and okay yeah absolutely absolutely so yeah, you're you're trying to get a better idea of what all is going on. You're trying to kind of get gather more information. You're searching around, and you do see that there is something just off to the side of the trail. Uh, it looks like maybe it's been discarded or it fell off. Somebody dropped it. It looks to be a small piece of a buckle or a button or some sort of brooch, maybe. Um, and it's got a strange symbol upon it that almost looks like a embossed. Uh, face almost uh, kind of, I mean, it's it's abstract, it's not exact, but it almost has a skeletal look to it, uh, almost with like a strange, dare you say, crown or horns or something. Mm -hmm. um, if you would like, go ahead, you can make a historical lore test to maybe see if you recognize exactly what this might be. So if the Y axis is Lich and the X is King, it's about here. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You got a 15. 15. You do recognize this symbol. This is a Kurnish army insignia of people who are loyal to the Lich King. Skippy Skippy. Now, you would also know from the historical lore that the war has been over for some time. Mm -hmm. So the Lich King's army doesn't really exist anymore, and they're certainly not down in this area. Mm -hmm. And this looks like it's been here a little bit less than just, oh, it's been here since... Those people yeah. were sent here for the war. This looks newer. This is not good. This is really not good. Not sure how they could be down here, but... Every war has its deserters. Mm. Could be leftovers. What I really, really hope is that there's not a shadow gate. Really, really hope there's not a shadow gate here. That would be bad. Be a bad scene. That would be very bad. What sort of information are you trying to glean in this area, Chai? Uh, I was looking around. Uh, badgers, uh, old badgers don't have the greatest eyesight. I only got a nine. Just trying to like keep an eye out. Looking for uh, like any... I don't know. Like, are they patrolling in any sort of pattern that we might be able to slip by? Are they like just standing there? What is there anything odd that I can detect about them other than they're not where they're supposed to be? Right. Um, well, you don't really notice anything with your sight, as you mentioned. But if you'd like to perhaps make a uh, empathy roll, which would be falling under, um, <clears throat> excuse me, your uh, perception as well. Can maybe get an idea of their body language, how they carry themselves, what their tactics might be. That actually worked a lot better. That's 14. 14. It's strange. It's almost like the soldiers are just slowly, um, I think a term that you might have heard the humans say is lollygagging. It's like they're just kind of loitering about. 
it's kind of weird. They don't really have a sort of formation. They're all just kind of standing, and it looks to be either uh, towards the front of this keep. Now, this is all still a distance away, so you guys mm -hmm. can't see exactly what they're doing, but you can see that they're down. They're just kind of really slowly milling about to the opening of this keep. Is there any other entrance into the keep? Nothing that you can see from here. We should try and see if there's another way in. I mean, keeps don't always just have one door. There's got to be in a, a back door somewhere. Mm -hmm. We'll have to take a, a scouting run around the outside. So it is, right. is it still a distance away? It would take you all, uh, it's going to take you all probably about another couple of hours to get down to where that area is because of the terrain and everything. You can't just you know climb down in there. You have to take a little bit of a roundabout way to get down into this uh, ravine-like area, but uh, you could, once you get closer, try to scout around for sure. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, all right. So the three of you make your way down, and as you get closer to where this ravine is, you go down and you take your time. You want to make sure you don't slip and fall, hurt yourselves, you know, do anything strange. And you get down to the... <laughs> That's right. You both <laughs> messed up your shirt. You don't want to ruin your jeans, too. <laughs> You uh, when you get down to the bottom, you see that there is a crest of a hill that is kind of basically where imagine an area where like a moat or a guardhouse would be. There is a, a rise of dirt that's been put here. It probably once was a battlement of some sort, but mm -hmm. it's got you know natural dirt formations that have fallen over it. There's vegetational growth here. Um, and as you get down here, the uh, the light begins to turn ruddy as the setting sun begins to dip. Drift off to the west. I think we peek our head over and see if we can see anything with these soldiers. Are they still in the same exact position? Are they still milling? Are they facing us? Are they facing in? Just anything else we might be able to see without them seeing yeah. us. Sure. Uh, you look up over the crest of the hill. You make your way down a little bit closer. And you, as you look, you can see that these soldiers, they are still, they have not gone anywhere. They're pretty much right where you saw them before. They are all conglomerated towards the front of the keep. And they're all slowly milling about. And then suddenly when you look up and your eyes m make them, you, all of a sudden they all just stop. Motionless. Almost as if somehow... They know you've arrived. It's really eerie. There's a strange, cold chill that washes up all of your backs for a moment. Your hair stands on end, you'll notice, Chaya. And these soldiers, one of them slowly starts to turn. And as he does, his gaze slowly turns, revealing his features towards where you're at, Malachi, in the front looking. And you see that this man's skeletal features peek out from underneath his helm, his battle helm that he's wearing. As he looks, you can see that there is Kurnish livery that is flapping softly about him and other soldiers. You see one is actually holding an old flag of sorts that is basically just worn away from the weather. It's really broken down, has tears in it. Uh, you can see that there's rotting leather armor upon their bodies as they all start to slowly turn towards you all. You can see this rusted chain mail that hangs off of their bony frames. You can see that definitely these men are no longer among the living. These are definitely undead creatures, some sort of strange skeletal warriors that hold guard guardianship over this area still. And as they slowly start to turn, you hear that there is a voice just beyond them coming out of the front of the keep Hello? Somebody, please help. And you can tell it's a boy's voice, but it's very hoarse. Like maybe he's been yelling for some time. And um, you can see that there is the, the soldiers are here between you and wherever the voice is coming from. Please help. We're, we're trapped in here. My friend is hurt. I will duck back below the battlement and say there's good news and there's bad news. All right, start with the, well, the good news is the kid. Well, we can hear that. No, the good news is all the soldiers are already dead. Bad news is no one told them. Great. Chaya looks. Crap. The same thing. Chaya, you think you can get a hold of Frosty and see if he can send some help? It sounds like there's quite a few of these skeletons. Not at this distance. I don't know him that well. 
However, I'm going to try and do psychic contact to uh, to uh, the kid, Marcus. Okay, okay. I'll have you have to make a check because there is a distance and he is a bit um, frazzled. Upset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so go ahead and uh, make a check for that, please. Ooh, okay. Ah, oh, darn it. I thought I had doubles there. Uh, 13, communication, 14. Okay. You feel your presence drift out and make contact with the boy, and you can tell that his thoughts are a little bit erratic. They're actually a little bit distant, too. You have been in the pre- mind presence of other people, other, uh, as you said, the two-footed people, and you could tell that this boy, he's definitely, he's nervous, he's upset, he's concerned. You can tell he's very weak as well. Maybe, you, I mean, you can't tell this from feeling, but you can just have an idea that, you know, maybe he's hungry, tired, thirsty. You know, he's been on mm-hmm. his own for a few days with this wolf. Who knows how skilled he is at surviving in the in the forest. Mm-hmm. Um, but you kind of get a, a general glimpse of all of this. And as you're doing this, you're going to notice, Ortelia, that the skeletal warriors start to turn towards the three of you. And you can see that one of them slowly raises his bony, ivory white fingers up towards you and he is motioning and the others start to pass him slowly moving in the direction of the three of you. Oh, sword is out. I'm getting in front of these two. Definitely in front of Mal. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and are you all entering combat with these... Uh former enemies of the state yes all righty let's roll that they need to be completely dead oh they need to be completely dead yes that's right (laughs) all right so we'll go i'll go down the order of who went what order that way we'll figure out so chaya what did you get this time chaya is apparently distracted uh Uh reassuring marcus that they were coming to help so i got a nine nine okay and malachi i was even more distracted with an eight oh do we have a seven? I don't know. Right? We have a ten. Oh, ten, nine, eight. Okay. Ten? Okay. <laughs> Let's see if they do have a seven. Nope, they don't. They have a uh twelve. Okay. So would so, the enhancement thing work this time, Ortelia? If I gave you better yes. strength? Yes, because right. that would definitely add to my damage. Yes, now, she's, cool. yep, now she's fighting with a with a sword. Yep. All right. So the undead soldiers, the the Kernish skeletal zombie creatures start coming towards all of you. That's all they're going to do on their turn. So we're going to go ahead with the first of the party. Ortelia, you are the most ready. You heft up the sword. It catches the last bits of the sunlight coming down from the sunset behind you all. And uh, you are ready. Okay. What would you like to do? I am going to attack the first one that gets to us. I don't feel like we need to rush down. We should let them come at their own pace. Okay. Okay. Are they going to get here this turn? Or if we advance, it's going to take them another slow. turn to get to you. Yep. I mean, maybe can you use your bow this round and then switch to melee when they get closer? Not sure how much it a uh, arrow would do. To be perfectly honest, because think about it, space between stuff. Yeah. So I'll slowly advance, but I'm not going to like charge in because that would be silly. There's only three of this, and there's how many of these things? Now that you see them approaching, you get a full gauge of their number. There looks to be that you, the th- the three of you, are outnumbered two to one. There are six of them. Plus, there is the one who is now standing in the back, pointing his finger towards you. As you study him a little bit, because you're taking him to maybe be the leader of sorts, you can see he's not wearing armor like the rest. He's wearing an old tattered robe. Oh yay! Yeah. So I slowly start advancing. Okay. Um, so you're not going to full on attack them. You're going to wait for them to come to you. I believe is what you. I'm going to get about halfway, and I'm just I'm prepared so that you know if they get to me, I can take the delayed action. Sure. Okay. I think a round to prepare before everything really kind of hits the fan, as it were. So, um, uh, Chaya, what would you like to do? I will. I will move up to stand next to Artelia. Okay. This party is no fear. I love it. And Malachi. I will move oh, up maybe, to stand. Maybe here comes There's the our guy. fear. Behind Chaya and Orgelia, I will place my hand <laughs> on Orgelia and cast my enhancing spell oh. uh, to enhance their strength. Hopefully I roll okay this time. 
Not bad. Uh, no doubles, unfortunately, but that is an 11, <sighs> 15, 17, which I believe is a plus two. No, plus three. So you have a plus oh. three to your strength for 10 rounds. Oh, that is amazing. What a nice, nice. boost. That's awesome. Okay. Thank you. You hear what must be Marcus. Please help. My friend is hurt. Please. Please. A quick question. Uh, is there a fatigue roll for that, Michael? Oh. Do, 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 do. Oh, well, I don't know what the heck I just did there. Oh, that's a good call. I've actually been forgetting uh, no, about the fatigue. Resistance, okay. No. So, wow. You're just full of energy. I am. <laughs> it's it's a positive fatigable. outlook on life. I'm cheerful. And with that, the skeletal warriors continue to move in. So there's going to be the two that are right in the front are going to move up right towards you, Ortelia. They're going to come up, and they both have swords. They're old, rusted swords that probably are not going to be great to get hit with, you would guess, because they look really serrated. I mean, tetanus really isn't a thing in a fantasy world, but, you know, still <laughs> Sword, you know. It's fantasy uh, tetanus. So fantasy tetanus, right? Okay, they're coming in with a. Let's see what their plus is. Okay, yeah, they're coming in with a twelve against your defense. My defense is a seventeen. Okay, I'm just gonna have them both use the same roll just to make it easy. I'm not rolling seven hundred dice. Um, so yeah, they both come in and you bring up your sword to parry with a flash. Ching ching, you knock their swords aside and you know. Get ready. Um, there are the other ones that continue to move in as well. It looks like they're basically fanning out to try to, you know, there's two on one. So they're trying to use those numbers. They're basically trying to fan out and get, you know, the two on one. So the, the first two came to you. The other two that are coming in towards Chaya are going to get there on the next turn. And then the last three that are going to be coming towards Malachi, same thing, but they have to kind of go around. So that's why it's going to take them a little bit longer to get to you. But, um, uh, that was or Ortelia. It is your turn now. Now you guys can also see um, that in the back, uh, you know, coming from like where the keep is, there is um, you can see a strange shadow that kind of drifts down the one side of the wall. It looks unnatural. It doesn't look like it's from the sunset because the sun is setting behind you all. This is coming from the other direction. A little bit weird. Well, I got. 15 with doubles, five stun points. Okay, yeah. Nice. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to go dual target. Nice. Cuz right there. Love it. Love it. Okay. Doo, doo, doo. So, I assume 15 will hit each of them. Definitely. Cuz you have to treat them independently. Yep. So, 3d6. Well, so just 12 on the roll, plus another six, so 18 points. Oh, okay. They do have armor rating of four, uh, because they, even though the armor is dilapidated, it still is going to be Still armor, much. yeah. Yep. So they're going to take 10 instead. Okay. Uh, yeah, so your sword swings true and slices through two of them, cutting off a little bit of their leathery... Um, uh, scaled armor, but uh, they're not out of the fight quite yet. Um, Chaya. Um, since mine haven't gotten to me yet, I am going to turn and attempt to rake uh, one of the ones that is on Ortelia. All right. Aiming also, because why not? Um, so that's for 13. Doing eight points of damage. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it sinks in. Um, it it uh, slams into this guy, and he takes the damage from that. You see, he recoil. They don't really slow down so much as they just kind of lurch a little differently as they continue to move in towards you all. Okay. Uh, Malachi. So Chaya, would you benefit from that same strength enhancement for your combat? Oh powers? yeah. Okay, then I will do that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, that is only plus two to your strength for 10 turns. 
no stunt points. I keep, I'm going to get seven points because I can do it like double it or double the time, but no, no. Uh, and then as a minor action, can I put my guard up? Yes. Yep. I will put my guard up uh, plus two to my defense. Perfect. Okay. So that skeleton in the back, he just continues to point and then he's going to slowly lower his hand and he just stands there watching you all. He's taking it all in. It's a little bit weird that he hasn't engaged you all. The other ones seem to be mindless and attacking. He seems to have a strange knowledge to him. But the ones that are attacking you all, there are the two that are right there on the front against you, Ortelia. They're going to come in swinging their long swords trying to claw and bite into you. Um, they are going to attack you with a uh, 10. 17 oh, defense. Okay, yep. And so as they both swing, again, you are moving and bobbing and weaving in the thrill of battle. Their blades are swinging free. One of them actually comes up, swinging at your neck, and you bring the sword around and deflect it out of the way. Uh, you're just too skilled for these guys, it would seem. Um, there is the ones that are coming in against you, Chaya. Okay, it's going to be a 13 uh, and and they are skilled enough, or I am unskilled enough to, to get a hit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That does generate three stunt points. Oof. So they are going to use their special stunt that they have just as a specific creature. In the system, certain creatures have stunts specific to just them. So they're going to use their swarm tactics. Uh, the Walking Dead soldiers can perform swarm tactics as a special stunt that costs three stunt points. Uh, that it allows, if one of them hits, and one adjacent to them can get a free attack against that same target. So basically, they I'm kind of ruling it as like the two are kind of working together. So basically, mm -hmm. they're going to get an extra attack is what's going to happen. So I'll just roll it again. And you can't generate stunt points on this roll if I do roll doubles. I didn't roll doubles anyway. Uh, that roll is going to be only a 10. That'll miss. Okay, so that first one does hit. It's going to be 1d6 plus 3. Ooh, you're going to take 9 points as he takes his rusty longsword, brings it up, and stabs into you. Yeah, that, that really nice bandage that uh, that uh, my friend here, Malachi, put on me uh, is now, like, fluttering to the ground, and that wound has very much reopened. Oh, no. Oh, no. And then some. And then some. Okay. And then fantasy the tetanus. <laughs> that's got to be a new hashtag right there fantasy tetanus uh the one coming in towards you malachi is they get to you now and just one of them is going to come in at you uh that's going to be 15 that will hit okay no stunt points on that you guys are love I, I i'm not getting any stunt points so hey that's good that's good though um Damage is going to be 1d6 plus 3. Uh, that's going to be 8 points as his longsword swings down and slices across your chest. So your arm sleeve was all damaged, and now they cut through part of your lapel. Uh, it, this, oh, man. this whole outfit, outfit is ruined now. Like There's, there's oh, no coming back to this. It's terrible. Uh, <laughs> and Ortelia, it is your turn. All right. I told you not to wear brocade. Blood ruins brocade. <laughs> Um, let's see. 12. The only thing else 15. I had was silk. This seemed like the better choice for the so words. 19 with double sixes. Oh, nice. oh, my, my, my. Okay. Well, that'll definitely hit. And you have six okay. stunt points. Yep. So. So I feel bad for these guys is what I that don't. translates to. Oh, oh. Maybe a little bit. oh. I might even say I All have right. a bone to I've... pick with them. With six. Mm. Now, here's how how do you want to do this? I, I want to use humorous. dual strike and I want to use mighty blow. That's six. Got your funny so dual strike bones. means I can hit two targets, so I should mm. do damage to each of them. Mighty blow adds an extra d6 of damage to the attack. Now, would that go for both targets or would that only be one? Yeah, let's do it together. Let's do it. Let's go all out. You want me to roll once for once and that's the damage to each target? Uh, yeah, you, you, can, yeah you can do that, or you can roll each individual one. Up to you, whatever you're comfortable I'll with. I'll roll them all as one. So okay. first the 3d6, and that's 10, 14, 20 points of damage with the strength oh. bonus. All righty. Bam. And as you pull that sword away from your blocking position, blocking his blade, you bring it down, and you do a powerful strike across the two of them, and pow, pow, there's two heads that spiral off of them and their bodies just smook. And as they crumble, there is a weird 
shimmer, a weird shadow that kind of pulls up off of them and goes back towards that skeletal guy in the back. Oh, great. And that was awesome. You know who made the skeletons? <laughs> and uh, that is your turn? That is my turn. All righty. Chaya, in the thrill of battle still, you have these skeletal guys on top of you. What would you like to do? I am going to rip and tear and claw and claw, etc. Uh, that is doubles, and I'm loving that. That's 14, 17. Oh, definitely 17 hits. So that's, and I got doubles with six stunt points. Oh, my, my, my. So I am going to dual strike and mighty blow. Nice. Hey, so we're, for we're the first the first one it's i'm just gonna combo. do damage uh which is five seven plus five that's 12 to the first one okay and then dual strike apply the test of your original attack roll to the secondary target okay cool uh inflict normal damage which is the that which is eight points of damage to the second one Okay. And then I will uh, also guard up for my minor. Sure. So you bite into the the first one, and as you do, you bear him to the ground, and as you do, you turn and swipe out and claw across the second one. It doesn't drop quite yet, but you are still gaining the advantage here, and you are moving through the fight. Uh, and Malachi, you have the two coming up on you. The one has only kind of made it to The other one is kind of behind him. They're coming up in towards you. I'm going to try to be strategic here. I'm going to attack the one that Chaya almost dropped, hoping that I can take them out. Uh, So I will use a minor to aim to give myself a plus one, and I will try to crack it in the head with my staff. Okay. Uh, 11, 12, 14 total. 14 will do it. Yeah, they're sitting at a defense of 12 because of the armor. And that is a measly five damage. You know what? Five was enough. It had exactly five left. So yeah, as you swing forward with the staff, you crack into it and its jawbone snaps off and falls down. Well, it falls down and it crumples down. And uh, Chaya, you manage to see it falling. So you move as it crumples and it lands right where you were standing (laughs) or uh, in a battle position, but uh, you're out of the way. So, all righty. And again, when these ones drop, there is that of the black shadow emerging out of them and going back towards that other creature. So back to the top, there are the two remaining, the ones that are on you, Malachi. Um, I'm going to say because of how that second one has to move, he's walking with a a strange gait, like a weird, um, strange movement to his leg. So he is slower, but they both are at you now. Yeah, he's got the same wound I have. I know it. Yeah, the psychosomatic type. (laughs) I rolled three ones. Oof. (laughs) Ow. So as that one comes at you, it takes its long sword and it swings it at you. And as it does, there's something it slips on or maybe Lady Luck reaches out and caresses its shoulder to help you out here, Malachi. It slips on some sort of mossy growth on the ground. And as it spins and turns, its sword spins and stabs into the chest of that second one coming up. And it actually gets lodged and stuck in its rib cage. So you see it trying to Pull the sword out. I see none of that because I've be ducked my head in cowardice. <laughs> Someone will tell me about it later. Yes, exactly. I love it. I love it. So, yeah, so the second one's going to lose its action. They're kind of stuck together. So, Ortelia, it is going to be your turn. It looks like there is just these two that are left. Uh, we'll just go together. after them. All righty. Uh, no doubles this time. Okay. Got 15, 19. So I'm going to go after the one that's holding the sword that's stuck into the other one. Yeah, sure. I just rolled three sixes. Oh, now. Plus the plus this extra six from the strength bonus. I love it. So something fun that I like to do is kind of an optional rule that is buried deep in the age system. If you roll three sixes, you get to do a heroic, historical, legendary action that is going to be sung for eons hence. So because we're in a romantic setting, tell us this big grandiose thing that happens as you're going to 
change the tide of this battle. Give us a moment. You know, tell us this tale that the troubadour is going to be singing in ballads hundreds of years from now, if you could. No pressure. No pressure. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. She sees how Ortelia sees how the uh, these skeletons are coming after her companion Mal. She oh, I'm definitely around. in the story. Lead with that. <laughs> Mal was in danger. Yes, yes. And that is why I rose to the challenge. Yes. Good. good. We're, we're working on loathing and dignity left in tatters on the ground. So she whirls from her last attack, turns around, goes through the the chest of the the skeleton in front, comes up, hits the skull. And it hits it in an arc, and it lands at the feet of the robed figure. Oh, excellent, excellent. And as that dark skull spirals and lands at the feet of its master, that strange shadow emerges out of it and goes back up into the shadow creature. It looks up at all of you and just kind of slowly cocks its head off to the side and it just starts to slowly gate forward towards all of you but chaya it is your turn there is the one undead left the one that got the guy with the sword ripped out of his chest basically he's just again he's got a bad leg he's looking confused he's you know, got he's a just, sword through his chest yeah the sword is still there but the guy dropped yeah so he's just kind of like looking around like what is happening but what would you like to do how it's within far... your movement to get to him you don't have to do anything crazy to get how far is it to robe boy oh i'd say that would be a full movement for, okay. for that so it's chai is like action, you, know? you guys got this and runs <laughs> full tilt like leaping doing the rocket raccoon full charge and just is going to do uh, a leaping attack, like vaulting off the skull and leaping up into the air. Awesome. Alec, this is an all out attack. Too, terrified. By the way. As Chaya runs away. <laughs> no, go That's back. A I don't math. have this. I don't have this. So I'm using fighting. So that's a 16. Yep. That no, work. no doubles, unfortunately. So 1d6 plus 5. 10 points of damage as I connect. Okay. And you leap forward and your teeth sink into the bony, you realize, um, body of this creature. It is a skeleton like the others, but again, it's a little bit more pronounced, but you do hit it. You feel something snap under the weight, under the power of your of your uh, jaw. And it doesn't drop, but you could tell that it definitely got injured in some fashion. Uh, Malachi... Uh, I will prove Chaya right or wrong by stepping <laughs> forward and trying to whack this thing in the head. Uh, I'm going to do an all-out attack so I can actually try to hit it. Oh, okay. Uh, and I will actually you aim first. I think that's how that works. Well, aiming is going to be for your uh, ranged attacks. 13. That is a 16 total to hit. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't think Definitely. that affects my damage, which is very poorly. Oh, I did roll well, though. Uh, seven points damage. Nice. Seven. Okay. Which is and, max damage uh, for me, by the way. Awesome. Well, your max damage was enough. You hit it, and as you hit it in the head, its head kind of caves down into its shoulders area, and it crumples as well. I'm going to look over and tell you. You, you saw that, right? <laughs> I did. Okay, it's all yes. part of the legend. That's right. <laughs> You can still hear the boy, please help me, help us, please. And as that happens, the strange robed figure seems to put their bony hand up like this, and the boy gets quiet. There's a, a weird shadowy kind of miasma behind it as it changes something you're not aware, of, but it is then going to just look at all of you, and it just kind of, from the finger, it just kind of slowly puts it towards you and shakes it back and forth like a, 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 a kind of motion. Um, and then it just stands there regarding the three of you like it is intrigued. So, Ortelia, what would you like to do as it kind of just stands there? Oh, I'm joining Chaya in this because you do not hold kids hostage, let alone Raiden. So, yeah. time to join the fight. <clears throat> so I've got 12. 
I got a 12 to hit. 12 will hit. Oh, deep. I can add, really, I can. Uh, 19 damage. Okay. That's powerful. Thank yeah. you, thank yeah. you, thank you, Mal. <laughs> yes, and you double-handed, you take the sword, you swipe down into the spellcaster, or whatever this guy is, and it slams through into him. You can see it, you can feel it catches on something beneath, but then rips the rest of the way out. And there is that shadowy form kind of flickers for a second behind you all. And Chaya, the creature slowly turns to look at you. And again, it's just kind of looking at you like it's really confused for a second. And that's it. That's it. It's your turn. Okay. Uh, Malachi, you hear, Mal, get to the kid. Get him out of here. And I will do another uh, all-out attack with a minor action to aim at that. I'm going for that finger. I'm tired of him waving that finger at people. <laughs> Come with that finger. <laughs> uh, 12, 15. That'll hit. Yep. He takes nine points of damage to the finger. Oh, brutal. Finger what finger? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there was a snapping and a wrenching sound as you yank it free from his hand. Um, Malachi. I want to run towards the sound. Now, I, 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 if you said this part, I don't remember. Like, is the entrance to the keep open or was it closed up? Like, can I get inside? It, yeah, it seems to be open. All right, then I will uh, use a major action to run, which doubles my speed to try to get sure. there. Because uh, one of my abilities is I can use healing as a minor action. Uh, so Ooh, if I can nice. get to the boy or the wolf, I'll, as I'm running up, I'll see which one looks the worst, and then I will heal that one first. Absolutely. As you run up and you you run past everybody, the skeletal guy in the robe lets you go. As you run through that weird shadowy miasma, there's a cold that really seeps into you. It's like all of a sudden you run in, out into the winter, like the deepest winter. And if you could, let's have you go ahead and make a constitution stamina roll. Front row. Front row, Raggy. Uh, not bad. Uh, 7, 12, 13. 13, yeah, you're okay. And you push through it, though, and that cold, as you get all the rest of the way through, it's like it like pulls off of you and you kind of get a weird chill and you move up and you do get to where the front entrance is and as you turn you can see that just inside the entryway there is a little like a ledge like an outcrop an alcove i guess one more important there's an alcove just inside there where you can see the boy has actually holed himself up in the undead wouldn't be able to reach him from here if they did get through the doorway and curled up next to him is the wolf um they both look very tired very uh hungry very sad scared uh, but you do get to them and uh they both look like they're both they don't seem to be injured they just seem to be again just tired and worn out and just really not having a fun time their little adventure was definitely not what they anticipated they're kind of over it now they want to go home so yeah all right i will so go ahead and still do a cure anyways even if it's more like a, an emotional support but i will say the soothing words and lay my hand on on the wolf and the the child uh, i guess i'll heal the child first Okay. Ooh, not great. Four, seven, eight, nine. I did pass. Uh, so that is four, five, six points of um, healing back. Okay, great. And you can see some of his color starts to return. Oh, thank you. Did did, did they send you? Did, did the town that did they send you? Your your dad sent me. He, he yeah, let me sit on that. Uh, I'm going to yell to the others, I have the boy. He's okay. But the there's a dark force between us. I don't know how much I can say in that much time, but I'll, you know. Sure, yeah. About that. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. So outside, the uh, weird guy in the robe, he actually now takes his hand. He's got the one finger removed, thanks to you, Chai. He gestures with the other hand and puts his hand out and there is a strange... Actually, let me roll to make sure it happens. Kevin's trying to get all cinematic. I gotta actually roll. 
Oh, you know what? It doesn't happen because I roll lower than the TN. So he yeah. actually, there's like a black <laughs> dart that starts to form out of the inside of his palm. And as he gesticulates, he realizes that maybe something happened. His, his head cocks back behind him to realize that Malachi has run past and gotten into the sanctum. And so his concentration fails and the uh, shadow dagger that he was starting to form in his hand just kind of dissipates. And that energy, much like when it came off of those undead, just... He goes off of him back into that strange, weird shadow wall behind him. Um, and that's it for his turn. Ortelia. Oh, let's see if we can finish this guy off. He's looking pretty weak. How about that roll? Um, 6, 10, 11. 11 will hit. Is he dead on his feet? <laughs> nice. You got a million of them, Michael. I love it. <laughs> 19 damage again. Oh, my Jeez. goodness. Oh. I've got a plus six with the string. That's true. Beautiful. Okay. You hack down in, and um, if you could, if you can roll a die if you'd like, or you can just tell me, uh, right or left? Left. Left. His left arm gets lopped off at the shoulder and flies off, and as it does, it turns into this weird ash and goes back into that weird shadow wall. And, it. and Chaya, this is why Kern is nasty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chaya, it's your turn. Uh, I'm going to go for the other arm. <laughs> All out attack All right. again. All right. All right. Uh, 11. 11. 11's it. Oof. I got three stunt points. Oh, nice. Which do 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 do. I'm going to do Pierce Armor. Yeah, I'm just going to do Pierce Armor. Okay. Ooh, yes, that's 11 points max damage. Nice. And yeah, you wrench through whatever it was that you're uh, the, the caught on before, like underneath. Uh, you pull away part of that, and there's like a breastplate underneath the robe that starts to rip off, and you damage it, and you reveal just more of this skeletal form beneath. And yeah, you bite into it. You you can feel its form starting to give way. There's like shadows that are kind of pulling off of it, going back into this weird wall. And Malachi, you're in there with, uh, it's got to be Marcus and uh, Greymane. So what would you like to do? Uh, so does Greymane seem to be like again injured? Like I'm not like I know you mentioned that, but it just Malachi may not have registered yet. Like, is there an actual injury or is it just straight fatigue? Uh, now that you're in here and you're taking a moment to assess what's going on, you can actually see that she does have a small uh cut on her on her paw, like maybe uh, maybe a trap or maybe something happened in the the ruins here because it looks fresh, looks okay. it looks newer. All right, then I'll I'll heal them as well. Um, okay. I also try to in initiate a psychic connection with both of them oh, okay. uh, since this is a right uh, wolf and try to like communicate that I'm here. We're, you know, helping to stay calm. You know, my, my allies are outside finishing up and then also asking maybe gray knows like, what the heck is this? Is there any information they could give us? I could communicate to my allies. Sure. So first step is the healing. Um, mm -hmm. I did really well and I got uh, five stunt points. So I'll just oh, great. make it more powerful. So it like it does a lot okay. of healing. So normally it would be five. It would normally do seven. I think I can make it 12 if we follow the same rules from before. Uh, sure. So 12 points of healing to the wolf. Um, mm -hmm. And then again, I just want to try to ask through the psychic connection. Like, do you know what this dark wall is? Is that like something we need to be worried about? Definitely. So as you heal up her paw, it's healed completely because of the, the powerful magic that you wield. And with the psychic bond that you feel, it comes very easily. As you try to do it between the two different targets, you find it's almost like you're connecting with one because they already have this rye bond. From what you've experienced and what you know about it, plus a little bit more that you've talked with Chaya about it, you can tell that that's definitely what's going on with this boy and this wolf. And so you reach out and yeah, you ask these questions and you feel her voice presence in your mind. It is an effigy from the time before. The shadows cling here. It is left over from the war of all of the two-legged creatures that walk. If you defeat the dark within, you can defeat the dark without. 
and outside okay that guy he actually is going to gesture some more uh looks like he's a little more furtive this time he's actually aware now that uh toying with you guys was probably not the best thing to do so he starts to gesture one hand this time his spell does work so as he gestures you see shadows begin to pull off of that uh, wall behind him and start to wrap around his body uh, making it a little bit harder to see so his uh, defense is going to go up a little bit and he moves past the two of you it almost looks like he glides like a shadow between the two of you trying to get on the other side so that his back is not to where malachi went and as he moves past you both please make a i'm going to call this a willpower uh we'll call it a willpower purity roll. Ten with four stunt points. If I succeed. Eleven. Eleven with four stunt points. Okay. You both feel it's not painful, but you feel something uneasy in your minds and you hear a voice. The land will know us again as it moves past you and as it gets in that position and the shadows completely uh, wreath around his body he says the land will feel the strength of the kernish might the shadow comes and that's his turn ortelia <laughs> oh kernish might this <laughs> Eighteen to hit. Eighteen will still do it, even with the heightened armor. <clears throat> Eighteen points of damage. Ooh. And yeah, you pretty much yeah, you say uh, yeah, Curtis might Curtis this yeah, this. <laughs> <laughs> and you take the <laughs> you take the sword and you slice through the shadowy wreathing armor around him, and as it does. It slices through him and his body just kind of turns into that mist and then it kind of bounces back and then it just evaporates. It gets sucked back into the wall behind the two of you. And then there is a weird shimmering and flickering type of effect and the shadow wall just seems to disappear. That strange malaise that you all felt coming from this area leaves with it. And after a moment, you all Look to one another, you realize that there was something evil here, something dark that has been vanquished by the power of friendship and teamwork, and luckily this area is safe once more and you all look to one another. So, in these last moments as you start to collect up Marcus and Greymane, uh, is there anything specifically you all would like to do to try to get everybody together and get back in one piece? Well, I would say that as we come out, um, so is it common for in this situation for like Marcus to ride Greymane as a mount or not? Because I know that it's small boy, big wolf, it would work. I just don't know if it's common. No, not not particularly. I mean, sometimes you can maybe have a bond with, with an animal that, that would be big enough to allow, like a like horse. Like a ride horse. Yeah. Um, but in this case, not really. Okay. No, they're just more, e it, they're equals okay. in a way. So I would say that uh, Marcus is between. Food, water. I'm sorry. Food, water. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, but Hungry kid. Like, that seemed like we're, we're coming out and they're like, Marcus is leaning heavily on Gray Main. I'm trying to like support them both so they can walk and either one has to be carried or anything. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We'll get them out, get them some food, get them some water. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the only thing I kind of wanted, like in my head, I guess I know we're running low on time. I don't want to like push it too long. But when we get back to the village, I want to try to we're establish. Not, I'm not, we're not going back to the village yet. <laughs> Okay, well then I, I will wait. What I want to do, if if and when that do, happens. Yeah, I was gonna say, don't mean to stop there, but uh, uh, before we before we head back to the village, uh, Chaya is going to stop the two of them, like when we're feeding them before we set out, and she she will like initiate psychic contact with them and loop everybody in. It's like, Marcus, boy, is your home safe for you? Uh, he informs you that his dad is a bit tough at times, but he knows his dad is a good person deep down. He knows that he's been sad since his mother has has gone, but he knows that his father is still a good man. He just needs to be shown, you know, 
that they're still good in the world. So he hopes with the strength of his new wolf friend that he'll be able to do that. We'll take you home then, but let him know that while Greymane may not come back and bite him in an uncomfortable place if he treats you poorly, I have no such compunctions. And he nods emphatically. He understands completely. He gets your tone. He he definitely knows that uh, that's not an argument to have. <laughs> you 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 will tell him that before we leave you. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I I, I owe you my life, and I owe you the I owe you for the life of of my friend of of, of Greymane. Thank you so very much for helping me. Is there anything you want to do here before you head back, Mortella? I want to take a quick look around while the kid and Greymane are eating. I just want to search around and see if there's anything else that looks like it could be some kind of Kernish artifact mm. that this could have come from or something sure. else that's left behind. Okay, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, go ahead and do a uh, perception searching roll. Eleven. Just don't pick it up. Yes. No. You actually find near the front entry of the keep that there seems to be a small disc of some sort that was probably buried in the ground, and it somehow got kicked up when the boy and the, the riding wolf entered, and that's probably the source of everything. It has that same symbol that you saw as the dropped item on the trail, and so you put two and two together and realize that that's probably what the source of everything is. Um I mean, you have knowledge of the Kurnish Empire, what all happened, but this probably would be something you'd want to take to someone who is very skilled and knowledgeable about what's going on to get a further idea of what exactly the darkness within this thing could be. I will get a like piece of inert now, I guess you could say. I'll get a piece of cloth and I'm still not touching it with my hands. Sure. So I'm going to like wrap it up. Mm -hmm. And it's like the next time we see a sovereign's finest, we're giving this to them and saying, figure this out. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Creep factor Definitely. high. <laughs> mm. absolutely and uh anything else or would you guys like to head back we could head back head back okay so you all take some time and you make the journey back you stop at camp a few times until eventually you do get back to red briar and as you do you can see the townsfolk all come up they all are very pleased that you brought the boy back they all welcome you with open arms and then it is that you see the boy's father approach he sees you all well you did it i have to say i'm I'm in your debt, strangers. Ah. I would like to cash that remember, in immediately, sir. Um, remember that your child has a rye bond. Yes. And so what I want to try to do is is create mm -hmm. a psychic link between the the rye bonded duo and the dad. So the dad will kind of feel or sense or even see the connection they have to kind of Ooh. override his ignorance here and let him see like this is a powerful, beautiful thing that his son now has and he should be grateful for it. So I'm trying to like bridge that gap mentally so they can see what the, they, the couple have, the duo have. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I love that. Um, go ahead, uh, let's do a communication roll. You can either do psychic or you can do um, persuasion or maybe even animism to uh, kind of pull this all in together. That was not good. Um, <laughs> uh oh, that is a nine. A nine? No, so okay. technically I do have, two stump points because I got, or one stump point because I got two ones. Uh, <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, you, you try to open the dad's mind. He seems a bit confused. It doesn't really seem to take hold. Um, but um, you see that as you're all approaching and he sees this, he sees the his son walking with the wolf and he's, oh, that's the creature that I saw. That... And then he looks and his son goes, no, father, it, she's my friend. And Kind of taking a cue off of what you were trying to do mentally, the boy approaches and he says, you know, you know she saved me. She she brought me back just, just like these ones did. And he points to the three of you and his father looks to the to the wolf, looks to all of you. And maybe there's something with what you did that maybe did take hold on a, on a deeper level. I'll try to enhance it and just say, you know, your your son wouldn't have survived till we got there if it hadn't been for the for the right wolf. Like you owe your son's life to, to her as to, to as, as much as any of us. Definitely. Definitely. And, uh, there's a moment of realization that seems to come over the father and he actually does get teary eyed for a moment. And he goes, Oh, 
I can't lose you too, my son. And he comes up and he embraces him for a moment. He looks tentatively at the wolf. Maybe there's something that has to be built there, but first bricks of the bridge have been formed today. So, um, in this you're not moment, losing the you sun, all... you're gaining a rye wolf. What's what's the marriage yeah. equivalent of that? <laughs> and uh, right before, go. like, as he does that, Chaya like looks at him and just does. <laughs> right. <laughs> Got number, buddy. Stop badgering the father. Oh, oh. Hey, oh. I bite Malachi <laughs> <laughs> right on the ass. Yeah that's, yeah. Pretty, yeah, that's how that should end. Not yeah. my well, pants. The... I say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, not my pants too. Yeah, <laughs> not your pants, and you do a jump, and you jump up in the air, and we do a freeze cut. Yeah, <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. And we pull back into it's a new day, it's a new dawn. There's bird song that fills the beautiful, bright, sunny sky again, and the bright blue skies above close out this tale for today. But in the world of Aldea, there are plenty of other tales to tell that you could tell if you want to play Blue Rose at home. And please do. Fantasy Age is great as well. Uh, you can get all of it on Green Ronin's website. Um, shameless plug, if you want to buy something there, if you use the code uh, GKHERO, all caps, you get a discount. Uh, so do it and uh, check it out and help us all out. So um, let's take a moment before we say goodbye. Let's remind everybody who everybody is really quickly. And if anybody has anything they want to play, plug i don't want to speak out of line michael that's how we do things right of course yeah absolutely yeah all right all right yeah so i'll go first and then we'll finish up with michael is that how we'll do it and you can take us out yep. okay cool so yeah i'm kevin um i uh, was your, your narrator this evening and i can be found online to the socials at kevran games um i've been on here before uh i've played uh Brywood Bay. I played uh, all kinds of stuff. We, we played with Michael. We we did uh, what we do Dune recently. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've done lots of detention episodes. It's always a pleasure to be here. Uh, this was uh, great to run my first game here. Um, if you want to see other games that I run, you can see me on Wanderers Haven uh, channel, which is over on Twitch as well. Uh, actually, tomorrow we are going to be showcasing Michael's game, my Action game. Twelve Cinema. It's going to be myself, Jeremy Hochalter, and Beth Masco, uh, part of the production staff. We're going to be playing it, and we're going to be making up stuff right on the get go. And it is going to benefit the No Kids Hungry uh, charity uh, team that's doing stuff for the next few weeks. Uh, so you can come in. We're doing a giveaway of some cool dice as well. So check that out. Give some money to a good cause and watch us just get crazy with some B level movie action with Michael's awesome game. It'd be my third time playing it. I love it. It's a fantastic game. And I don't just say that because he's sitting here staring at me on my screen. But you uh, would. It's an awesome game. I love it. I love <laughs> it. So but yeah, but thank you for having me. Thank you for letting me host. And uh please let's uh I'll pass it on to the next person. So Kaylee, go ahead and uh, tell us what's going on. Uh you can find me on the socials at anime girl. And uh if you wait another oh, how many weeks is that? Is that two weeks away? Oh my God, that's two whole weeks away. Two weeks from tonight over at smugglersblues.org, smugglers you will find a link to our YouTube channel. Uh, the crew of the Kralitz Fang uh, from the Redemption podcast will ride once more in our new tales called Smugglers Blues, a redemption story. This time it's a live stream and it's personal. No, it's not really personal. It is a little personal, but you can find us there. Uh, myself, my friend Michael and our GM Chris will be uh, returning to the Star Wars universe to tell stories. And this time it'll all be streamed live. So you get to hear all the weird stuff we do in between uh, role playing moments. So that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, and I think I'm going to be here for, uh, I might be here for a couple more of these uh, coming up soon. We just did Dune and Dragon, Dragon Bone, Dragon, Dragon Bane, Dragon Bane. I wrong vowel. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's, the scales have turned, obviously. It was the skeletons you were fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's obviously <laughs> it. Uh, and uh, you can find so you can find me here on the RPG Academy in a lot of places. So, Christine, over to you. Hi, I'm Christine, and you can find me on Twitch at SteenGeek01. I stream Elder Scrolls Online and other video games while also discussing anything in nerddom, including the forty plus RPGs that I own and have been playing since nineteen ninety. Um, and I'm also going to be working with Kevin on some future um, productions, so I can't wait. And I look forward to talking to anybody who wants to come and chat. So as for myself, my name is Michael. I'm the host here at the RPG Academy. Uh, this game was part of our sample adventure series. We have a bunch more we, we've already done. We have a bunch more we're going to do. And we've got a bunch of, you know, 
coming up. We're going to try to do these every other week, and we're actually going to set it up so that we rotate opposite of Smuggler Blues. So every Monday, you can experience something one week on their channel, one week on ours. Uh, we have a ton of podcasts. We've been doing this like 12 years. So if there's anything about RPGs you're interested in, we probably have an episode that covers it in some way. Uh, but if this is Mental Health Awareness Month in May, and I want to plug my other podcast I do that is about mental health awareness. Um, it's called HMA Pod or Healthy Minds Alliance Podcast. It's a like a 15-minute, 20-minute interview-style podcast with people who are in local communities teaching and educating people around mental health, uh, suicide prevention, that kind of thing. It's brand new. It's very small and needs some love. So if you are interested in that or just willing to give us a thumbs up plus button or subscribe to help us grow, search for Healthy Minds Alliance. Uh, and then also Action 12 Cinema, you can pre-order it now at the RPG Academy website slash Action 12 Cinema. Uh, so Rezo, Rezo TKO, sorry, I mispronounced it, just jumped in at the end, said it was a fun time watching. Thank you for hanging out. I really appreciate it. Uh, there will be an audio-only version coming out on the main feed in a few weeks, and this will eventually go on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, but we will sign off as we always do here at the Academy by saying if you're having fun, you're doing it right. You're doing it right. Thanks, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.